T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Shake it back! <laughs> Does that feel good? Yeah! Welcome, Shake and Bakers, to episode 24 of the Shake and Bake Show with Stevie Fast, Jackson, Courtney, Curly Hair, Enders, and Lyle looks like he's in a truck stop with me, Barnett. She hasn't washed her hair in four days. Okay. Yeah, oh, we, all right. Now I see the kind of show we're going to have. So, got it. Got it. Before we just started the show, uh, we had got a few little tidbits of information. And yes, Courtney has not washed her hair in four days, but it does look nice. And I just got back from the gym and did not shower either. So good thing this is not a smelling podcast. Woo, yeah, you'll keep that to yourself. Uh, we have absolutely missed the shit out of you guys. Um, it's been a whirlwind in our sport the last four weeks. <laughs> I was on the road for over a month straight, um, and we simply couldn't do a show the last few weeks. But thank you guys for your patience. And uh, we have both internally talked about and all of us individually how much we miss you guys. I mean, um, you get heat at the racetrack. It's kind of funny. Like, yeah, I, I was going to say that the patience factor was that there was none. We Not were getting there. hate mail. Death yeah, threat. I, I didn't get a when are you guys going to have a show? I got to get your ass back on the show. Yeah, I got MF. <laughs> we yeah. Were featured on Double O Shit Show for two weeks straight. I told oh, man, that was speaking. pretty good. I said, you're um, always nice to me. You attacked me. So I apologize myself if I have any technical difficulties or if someone knocks on my door. I am in my motorhome pulled in the middle of a Love's truck stop parking lot That's trying wild. to be like Lyle. Uh, there was no truck parking, so I just dropped the air brakes and, uh, <laughs> and parked. So my audio may sound funny. There may be somebody yelling at me. Uh, what has the cast been up to? Uh, let's tell the audience what you guys been up to the last month. You first. Um, well, let's go backwards. I just got back from uh, the World Cup Finals. If anybody watching this was at the World Cup Finals, wow, mom. That shit is rowdy. It was carnage filled. It was amazing. We were at the racetrack like 16 hours a day. I know if you were watching on the feed, it probably felt like there wasn't. It just spurts of action but on property, that place is just insane. I have I, I'm completely fluent in Puerto Rican now, I think, if that's even a thing. Prove it. Prove it. No, that's secret. You guys are both assholes already. That's strike two, Lyle. Strike two. I, no. I haven't done anything yet. Boricua. I'm just following that's what on. Say. Boricua or something like that. I don't know. I got to change Lyle's name. Um, but it was freaking awesome. There was so, yeah, Justin, what's up? I'm repping my, my new friends from the, um, it was amazing. Um, I think I don't know if we want to dive into results, anything like that. I know we have a lot to talk about, but the world knows Cletus won stick shift. Um, we had uh, Jesus Melendez break that record, run a 54. It was just rowdy. Like I went into this. And that son of a bitch. Oh, parental guidance. Oh, yeah, years. we need that. Uh, yeah, we might fire up the parental thing because we haven't been but on in a while. This is going to get rowdy. That's especially, system. especially when Donald Long gets on, it's going to get rowdy. That six cylinder when look, I'll give them their credit. I think that, that the import stuff is well, I, I think it's impressive. It's not at my wheelhouse at all, but that damn thing, unbelievable how well it ran. That was freaking awesome. Dude, and the energy of the people behind that team, like you can you can get behind a cool race car and a different setup. And even if you're not into the import world, whatever, but when you watch these teams and these families and how much passion and what they put into it and how they just lose their freaking minds when something like that happens and the grandstands too, you think I'm down there fiddling, trying to get cameras ready, doing these live lead-ins and stuff. And every single pass that goes down, the fans are like, oh, and I think somebody crashed every time. So you look real quick, but they're just all so excited for cars to even like cross the finish line. And we even had a Ricky Bobby moment, guys. They had a shake and bake moment. First round, two cars, um, both broke. 
and it was like coasting to the finish line and it was I so funny it. like and that thing ran like 25 seconds at 40 mile an hour or something barely like barely broke the beams at the quarter mile but it was so funny jason miller posted a video of like next year i have to reinstate the rule when they were running across the finish line we, it, we didn't think anybody was going to cross the finish line it was crazy but every kind of action you can have every kind of fan nonsense that place was just lit up it's insane but it's the same week as vegas next year already and i'm going to give myself 363 days to stress out about what i'm going to do lyle if you yeah. and i are in a race and our cars quit working i'm going to get out and push my car faster than you can push your car well i'm not pushing shit. i'm just going to take off running so if you want to try to push that behemoth that's fine but i am running for the finish line you can't legally trip the beams without the race car and win i'm getting I'll behind take, the car and pushing her down I'll, the I'll a, then i'll take a piece of it with me <laughs> oh you dumbass <laughs> what i mean like sometimes race cars lose parts and not all of it crosses the finish line so who says what percentage of it has to cross i'll just jerk the door off there you go. All right, so let's uh, – you, y'all want to start with World Cup since that's where we just were? Well, I didn't get to tell you what I've been doing. All right, tell me about it. We I don't remember what I've done since the last time we had a show. I know that we all had a shotgun uh, race in Vegas. Uh, Stevie and I spent, uh, let's see, in the 24-hour, 26-hour period, uh, I flew to XRP and back home. I was in an airplane for a total of a little over eight hours, and Stevie and I made like one – uh, hey. 70, 70 foot run. I think it was uh, about 65 feet. And then, it, and then it rained us out. Literally, Justin and I flew in that morning straight to the racetrack, uh, warmed the car up twice to the starting line, made one 65 foot hit. It rained the rest of the day. Justin and I got back on an airplane, flew back to North Carolina all in one day. Terrible trip. Awful. Uh, that but is difficult. Then we went to Vegas. Uh, Courtney, Vegas and I, cool. Courtney and I experienced um, the Freeman wedding. Uh, which was a good time, and uh, and then ended up back home. So uh, I haven't really raced beer money much. Mac Fab's wide open. So I'm not at a truck stop. I'm in my front yard. Uh, Nash D is extremely sick right now, and we're in a very small rental house, and where I normally podcast is right off of our bedroom, and Melissa said, listen, if I have to go get him and take Melissa him Melissa said, you ain't doing it. Yeah, she said, I said, can I podcast tonight? She's like, outside. It's like, oh, oh okay. Okay, so I'm literally in my front yard, like my house is right there. So well, I was gone for October. I was at home. I didn't even, I was at home for one day in October, and that was October 31st. So I left, it, it was kind of a blur. I left somewhere at some race. <laughs> oh, Valdosta. I was like, good story. <laughs> I was at Valdosta for a week. I flew, oh, yeah. I drove oh, to Atlanta, flew out of Atlanta to Brazil, ran a race in Brazil. Uh, we were supposed to go to Tulsa, same story as Lyle, got to Atlanta, got a hopper, got to Dallas, made one sixty foot squirt, flew there to Phoenix or something, or Salt Lake City, and then to Vegas, and then Vegas. It, it was a lot. So my October completely missed it. So if anything cool happened in October, I missed it. <laughs> All right, so sp speaking of our quick trip to uh, to XRP to test, I want to give a shout out to the Russians and their efforts to get that car back together to Vegas and to run. So for those of you that don't know, for get out from under the rock you're fucking living under. And the Russians piled it into the wall in the burnout at St. Louis, correct? Uh, St. Louis, yes. Yeah. Uh, in like two days, Johnny Lindbergh rebuilt this car. Um, they showed up in a, at XRP, uh, tried to make a squirt like Stevie and I did, uh, rained it out. Those guys loaded back in the trailer, drove to Tucson, made test passes in tucson then drove to vegas made the race and finished the season without missing a race so an unbelievable job by adam flamholt and that whole they were crew. running well in vegas and they really they've been, they've been they running good all year yeah they have, they have um and i just i think those guys deserve some kudos because they worked really really hard they have a hot rod that is going to be tough to deal with next year and uh and, and i'm just so proud of those guys i got to drive for them earlier this year they're a great crew and uh adam's a great dude and just kudos to them for the for the efforts they made it was awesome yeah and i want to also give kudos to, uh, to galen at xrp um we had very challenging circumstances it rained for a lot you know the whole southwest area was getting flooded they worked as hard as they could to give us a good racetrack did the right thing when we left um and i i appreciate that and we'll be back 
Um, but much has happened. How many racing events has happened since we had a show? All of them. Because I've been know. gone. This was my 12th weekend in a row, and I have one more. And so I don't know where I've been or what I've been doing, but there's been races, and I've been at them. Okay, so have we have we had a show since PDRA ran last? No. Okay, so give us a PDRA rundown because you were there. I was I there. I there. Did I retain anything? Probably not. No. Uh, Tommy Franklin won the championship, but I will say moment of the week. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm going to hear it, but was Jay Cox winning the race on his way out? That was just cool. Everybody loved it. The place went freaking crazy. It was awesome. Do you think Jay Cox will retire as many times as Ricky Smith has? I think. You no. think it will? No. I think. Less? Less. Less not than zero, Ricky. but less. Than no, I was going to say this isn't the. This is not the retirement. <laughs> no, right before we yeah. uh, started the interview, I was like, "Man, that's so cool!" Blah blah blah. I'm all sentimental, and he's like, "Listen, if I got to just bring a helmet, I'm coming back. I'm not dying, but I'm just not doing the whole freaking thing." So we'll have that. But um, Pro Stock was cool too. Uh, Alan Drinkwater, the People's Champion, is now the real champion. Won the, right, uh, right. Won the championship there. Um, it was party time. Jason Harris. And um, something else that was really cool to me was Blake Denton winning Super Street, which made the Franklins have their first, the another uh, world championship double up. Amber didn't win in 632, but they still got their double up. So uh, it was, it was a, a really smooth run event compared to the finals last year and all that. But it was it was really cool. And we're going to be streaming the banquet. We're going to have a live red carpet of some goofy stuff going on at the banquet. So uh, at PRI. So if y'all are bored there, check out the banquet on Flow Racing. Your girl's running the red carpet. I you don't know so. how to run a red carpet. I don't, but I'm doing it. Are you going to have like on one of them red carpet party dresses? Maybe. Maybe. I do have, we have the banquet this weekend. <laughs> 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 I will wash my hair for that. Although it's better to do it up to the dirty, but I think this is. A oh yeah, that's grease. Yeah. Um. Did Stevie freeze? Hmm. Looks like the uh, lot lizards may have cut. His <laughs> oh, but he looks back. cute. He was actually smiling. Yeah, if you guys just joined us, I'm in the middle of a love truck stop parking lot in South Georgia somewhere, and I could be gone or arrested at any time, at or any assaulted. Time. So oh. if I leave, whenever I can get some interwebs, I'll be back. Um, so that's pretty cool. So PDRA was a very awesome racing season this year. I think the racing, especially in Pro Boost, is as tight as I've ever seen. It looks to be as hard as it has ever been to win. Yeah. Uh, and the show is great. So I said that at, at World Cup this weekend. Like, we all know Jason Miller and them. They do a phenomenal job of putting asses in the stands there like it's all day it doesn't matter how many all downs that happen but and i'm not taking anything away from the racing that's going on at world cup but there's less on track stuff going on for those 15 hours and there is a pdra and i really wish that we could like join forces somehow and let the fans get in on some of the best racing in the country which i think is is pdra Courtney, is your birthday today no no her birthday is the 14th it's next oh. week next week Thanks, but we're ahead of time. well here's the thing because it's championship week so hopefully we're going to be celebrating erica so much like the rest of my For life your birthday my birthday always gets what day is that on pushed. like saturday or is it sunday uh my birthday's on monday i think, I think oh so you'll be celebrating monday. you'll still be hung over from the sunday on it's the banquet monday. day and all that stuff so yeah my birthday is always about erica it's fine courtney <laughs> i mean uh stevie did a ktr horsepower win old pro street um Tim Kincaid? Yes. Yeah, we had some KTR horsepower win Pro Street. We had Barker Max with the Hollywood Donnie Urban Mobile win Top Sportsman World Championship of the uh, PDRA. So uh yeah, it was uh it was a good it was a good weekend for the for the KTR umbrella. Uh Donnie's killing it and uh Tim King I, the Pro Street class is hot. Like it I'm is. excited and oh, interested I like in getting team, into the Pro Street class. I'm trying to move, nudge a couple of our KTR customers over that direction so I can play around. Um, we also, I guess the next race would be NHRA Vegas. You want to talk pro Madi? Yes. We have about 15 minutes before we get Mr. Excitement himself on here. Do you want to, y'all want to go to, to, to NHRA because it's going to take a little bit to do Vegas. 
but I, I feel like we need to try to do it before we get tongue on. Let's do it then. Let's knock the other. Shit we out have so, we can talk so many God. faucets to talk about in Vegas. Like yeah, I don't even know where to start. Back. Do you want? Do you want to talk about No Mercy first? That's fine. Okay, because I, I don't want to. I don't know if I got enough booze in me yet. We got about tech. Vegas. We got right. it. Yeah. No Mercy. Uh, great race. Don Long always does a good job. It, I felt like this year was very rushed, um, but. There was a bunch of cars, good racing, everybody's fast, everybody's hauling ass. Any standout moments that you guys had from uh, from No Mercy? Well, I think even despite the weather, uh, the crowd count was still pretty decent. Like normally an event like that, when the rain's coming in and it's forecasted, people start canceling rooms. And, and I know some people did, but there was still a good fan turnout. So thanks to all of you that did show up. The track staff did a great job battling all of that. We sat for an entire day and did nothing. and then they dried the track and they called us to the lanes and it rained again and they dried the track again. So uh, I think that the staff there deserves a quick round of applause for, for getting that deal in. It was not easy on them, nor Duck, which I'm sure he'll talk about that when he comes in. And let's be real, like connecting those two races right there too. I think that that, I was worried that that would affect car or not car count, fan count and just keeping the intensity and the interest as there was that many days of, of duck racing, but uh, it seemed to be a good event. Yeah, it was good. We were there, you know, being at Donald's race is, sometimes can be a marathon. You start early in the morning, you race till late at night. It was fun. The fans had fun. Uh, every time I go to one, I get itchy. Like I want to <laughs> come do it again. Yeah. So like when I left there, just like always, I'm calling the chassis shop, get me a radio rear end up on that thing. Um, so it, it was pretty good. Um, <laughs> Vegas. I don't know if we should start with how everybody run and what happened, or we should just dive into the tech department, or we should, I don't even know where to start. That's so messy. It's, <laughs> it's going to be icky. Like yeah. Vegas is going to be icky. Well, I think that when the season's over, we're going to talk about this some more. We're going to maybe bring on some people that were affected by this and uh, get the behind the scenes of what all that is. But we'll just, let's just do it. Listen, we had tech decided to start working this week. <laughs> so everybody clocked in this week. I have a, a, I don't know where you want to start, what class, but I got a lot of ammo. Well, I think we start with pro stock because it was the least controversial. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. It's really not. I so, don't know about that. That's true. So uh, the four, ahead. the four cars, four of our cars on elite motorsports got DQ'd, got their runs DQ'd um, for a safety violation, which is not, oh, there's Clay Milliken, what up, Clay? Um, not a performance enhancing thing. Nothing affected anything except this was a safety thing. So I don't want to hear another cheater word coming out of anybody's mouth. Um, earlier in the year in Gainesville, whenever Erica's car wouldn't start and Aaron Stanfield and TJ Coughlin's stopped in the middle of the burnout, uh, the NHRA Leahy switch was malfunctioning and our guys found a new way to wire said switch. So everything was hooked up. Everything was good. It was just the way that we did it. Um, in four of the cars they did not like been teching in those cars all year, teched in a brand new car on Thursday that Jeggy ran. It's Erica's brand new car teched it in like a new car. They looked it over tenfold and uh, decided to not check that stuff until Friday afternoon. Um, so Q2, we got DQ'd on those runs, still came back, ran low of the round, won the race. We lost three baby points, but uh, that's about, we lost three baby points and had a little bit of a PR nightmare for a second. But um, let's talk about that. Safety tech being done in the middle of a race. That's the controversial side. So do we feel like there's anybody or any teams that are being specifically targeted by the tech department? Or do we feel like it's random, uh, the timing and selection of this, uh, this procedure? Well, I think what answers that is how many other cars got checked for the same thing? I don't know. One. Five cars were checked, four were ours. Four, four of your top performing. Yes, which again, we are all, let me tell you, Richard Freeman, and I hope y'all mean that y'all take this as I mean it, Richard Freeman's red flag narcissistic traits 
will never allow him to cheat in any way because he wants to cheat in good points. So say what you want about all the things, but cheating will never be an issue at Elite Motorsports, doing things a little bit better, rerouting things. Jake basically wrote the tech book for them when he worked for him. And so I got to be in on these meetings um, when, and Lonnie was great. Lonnie was an absolute perfect voice for them and related in the way that he didn't get punched in the face by Eric or Richard. Um, and it was very understanding and it was pretty awesome. He, he felt for us. He kind of disagreed, even went back and they took another committee vote. Uh, the committee's voting on, on how it works, not the people who actually work for the tech department. So that was the only part that Richard was really pissed off about was the people in charge of tech don't get the final say in what happens. Um, but I don't, I don't think that anybody wants to cry witch hunt here because when you're on top, things are going to happen and all of that. But the main thing that irritated the folks within our pit was it's the timing of it. It's how many times these cars have been teched since then. It's the consistency, just like we talked about when Lonnie was on the show. It's the consistency or lack thereof of, of how they do what they do, you know? So we tech these cars, especially the Jag car. That thing had never seen the racetrack. Rick Jones delivered it to us in St. Louis. The reason Jaggy came out was to run that car for the first time, test it for Erica, teched it like a new car, top to bottom, approved next day. Just kidding. Not approved. Great question, Justin. That came up, but every single NHRA driver is participating in that race but we are the ones that are running it. So maybe, but again, Richard, Erica, everybody involved did not want this to come out as we feel victimized. We feel like it's a witch hunt. We'll do whatever they say and need, but there's gotta be rhyme and reason behind it. If you have a bad snell on your helmet and you go to the top end, they don't take that run from you. They take that helmet from you and say, you can't run till you have another one. So mm -hmm. we just felt a little, little iffy about that. So within pro stock, were there any, performance items tech or was it just safety yeah performance items were teched as well okay yep right. everything they had they had all the templates out all the jigs out everything everything dallas was the first time that they were doing wheelbase ride height all of that stuff um and it it just some things were said in our meeting about like you check these cars what happened in redding mm -hmm. did you check bypass stuff in redding when p other people were having electrical stuff we don't care. We know what every team is doing. We know all the things. Everybody knows all the things. Nobody's ratting anybody out because some of these things make sense. And NHRA sometimes is a little behind on this stuff. And, and we work together as a class. But as soon as this happened to us, we were like, here's all the things. So, so I have, a tr so beyond pro stock, so Brad, I'm not going to call them out. I have a massive email about a lot of stuff about funny card headers. Okay. And there's some shenanigans going on. Um, I, I can't read all this or, or post all this, but um, first of all, I want to lead off and say, I am excited to see any tech at all. You know, yes. in our class, we internally talk about, um, you know, we, we want as much, much tech as we can get, as long as it's being done, in a fair way and information is not getting out. We want, especially our cars, there's so many different power adders. We're, we are, most folks are happy to see tech department looking at stuff. Yep. Our team is an open book. They can come look around anytime. But there ha there was some questionable stuff on Tasca's car, I thought. Uh, when you're talking about, when you're talking about the width of a header on a nitro funny car, how do you judge how much that header bends during a run? Like, you know, when you're, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about this, but they take the width. There's a, there's a rule on the width of the it's header and the angle and the, the teams want to try to get the header as far away from the body, uh, to, to stop from burning the, the car off and making the header wider is not a performance advantage. Laying it back is, uh, Tasca's run was thrown out because I think his header was either an, I think it was an eighth inch too wide across there, I think. So his um, wasn't even an angle issue. It was a width issue. From what I understand, and you can't quote me on this because I haven't seen the official document, but from what I understand, it was it was too wide. The headers were too wide. I don't know. I mean, our our cars bend the headers on a run. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. you, I guess you would have to like just build them an inch in and hope they don't like throw them away before they get too wide. I don't know. 
I guess that was a deal with Deals Car. I don't know anything about funny cars or any of that, but just scuttlebutt of guys that I know that work there. You know, like he's running his stuff a lot longer than JR Todd is, given caliber of, of team and budget and all that stuff. And I guess his was just kind of wiltered. So they beat it with a hammer to make it legal, bring it back up. And I think that's a valid question, Stevie. Yeah, an eighth of an inch is what it, what I'm finding. Eighth of an inch. That's that's difficult. Uh, you know, and, and at least it wasn't an elimination, but it's uh, yeah. I, I'm on the fence because I like tech. Um, the timing of the tech. I don't know why we don't do all the tech in the beginning of the year. <laughs> at the beginning of the year, you're not doing this Saturday morning in the middle of the countdown. So, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Clay, he's too loud. Clay says he was DQ'd from an entire event. Wish I had only had one run DQ'd for a safety violation. Yeah, I don't really truly understand the whole thing with Clay. Maybe at the end we can we can get that, but I I don't know how I feel about that. I'm with you, Clay. Yeah, was it his, I, I, wasn't his loose ballast or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was loose ballast or something, but I think it, Clay had a nitrous bottle in his lap when he went down the track and tried to squirt it. I'm just kidding. Mm. They'll, be, they'll be writing about yeah, that. Yeah, that'll, that'll be on the, <laughs> on the cover. That'll be on the cover. Yeah, on the cover of something. No, we'll, we'll need to dive into that after Donald, I think, Clay, if you want to. Yeah, and I saw a comment about uh, us talking about No Mercy before Donald came on. That's why we just skimmed through it. When we bring Donald on, we're going to cover it much more in depth. Uh, so, um, so Top Fuel, uh, Top Fuel Championship race is very exciting. Um, it's, it's a shootout, funny car, pretty much, uh, gay, the pro stocks kind of all are running away. What does Eric have to do to win championship in Pomona? She's one fourteen ahead. Vegas really, really helped. That win in Vegas was awesome. She's one fourteen ahead, but it's points and a half in Pomona. So, uh, we need, we need to get in. We're, our goal for the whole countdown has just been go to the semis. If we go to the semis, we have, we're locked. I think it okay. can happen before that, but we're not, we're not down on our goals for anything. We're going to the semis. There's 182 points available there for you. It was 176. I don't know. I don't know, but we're 114 out. Um, my bitch is hungry, and um, I have to say this because we're on Shake and Bake, and the last time we were on Shake and Bake, Matthew Hartford, you did not dethrone the champ. I'm, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get Matt back on here to rebuttal. I would. Uh, I'm looking forward to next season. Um, there's some. Uh, the, the pro stock rivalry is getting hot. It's I mean, so it's always exciting. been hot, but it's fun to watch, and uh, it, especially when you get some dark horse folks in there. It's awesome. It's going to be good. Um, how about that pro mod final? Golly, dude. So for the first time that I have been racing NHRA, and the first time that I think. I know about ever. We had a full field in Las Vegas. Uh, NHRA Pro Mod is the only class that I think had a full field all season, every single one of our races. And I want to shout out to all the racers, Finish Line Consultants and Deb, uh, for the work that they put in to, to give the fans a show. Nobody saw happening what happened in Las Vegas. No. I did. I, I, it wasn't even in my thought process. If you guys didn't see it, uh, Chris Thorne and um, and Justin Bond were head-to-head -head going for the championship. That's all anybody ever talked about. Nobody really talked about Frank Manzo and Mike Castellana. No. Chris Thorne had a very – Oh, no. And, oh, no, my back. We lost, we lost for a second. And uh, it put Justin Bond, all the pressure on Justin Bond. And I think you were Wait. talking about it, Lyle. How was missed, that call in the, missed, in the tower? They missed. Um, so you cut out. Chris Thorne had a very unfortunate accident, is what Stevie said. Um, and he said it at the top end. I said it in the booth. Championship on the line. Car was in no man's land. He knew it. You know, tried to wrangle it. It got out from under him. And uh, and it was a pretty it was a pretty nasty crash. That thing got down there and got upside down. Uh, they had to flip it over to get him out, and you know, and now he's good. Car is a mess, but uh, Chris will be back. But when he wrecked, you know, I'm like, well, you know, all Justin Bond's got to do right here is snake her down through there, yeah. uh, let go on time, you know, and and the championships wrapped up. And I'll be damned if old River Snake, it was Kevin, right? Yep. Yep. If old Kevin Robin Bart River Snake didn't go up there, Lee White put a tune up in that thing. And uh, and they took Justin Bond out. 
uh, after Mike Castellana had already won his round, which automatically gave Mike Castellana uh, the championship there. Not on uh, my bingo card. No, not that's what like I told Joe off of off of the mic, you know, that like if I'd have went to the sports book and bet, that would have no, none of that would have been uh, on my card. So. It was, it was cool on my card because that race car he's driving is a championship winning son of a bitch. But just the way it all went down, you know, yeah. that is the third championship for that race car in NHRA Pro Mod. That's awesome. Charlotte yeah. is still doing work. I told Frank, I come up to the top end. I told <laughs> Frank, I said, you think I can just hold that thing for a season? Like, can I hold it? <laughs> just let me, let's let me hold it. But a uh, great race by ProMod. Um, I was really happy to have all, all, as many fans as we did. We had seven, 60 or 70 people from Brazil come for our team, um, and it, it was a good show, and everybody worked hard, and um, I, I think we had an amazing season in NHRA yeah. ProMod. Next year is going to be hot. I mean, it's the first time since I've been involved at all that <clears throat> it wasn't wrapped up before we got to Vegas. You know what I mean? And I've heard a bunch of – a bunch of banner back and forth about whether the countdown for pro mod was a good move by the NHRA and how that could bat backfire and the substitute driver rule, you know, and I'll be the first one to say that I think the substitute driver rule uh, is a plus. It's the only reason I got to drive this year. Um, and then obviously the countdown, it was not decided until the second round of eliminations in Vegas. And it caused it. The direct result of that was a full field. So I think both great moves. I hope they keep that. Uh, in the mix, and, um, and and I thought it was great, man. You, I, every year that I've been to Vegas, I think the first year we had 12. Last yeah. year we may have had 11. You know, like this, not good. And this year it was 16 a full a full field, and it was great. Yeah, I am uh, I am fired up for next year. There's a lot of cool stuff coming. I wish I could talk about, but I can't yet. But coming soon. Okay. Without further ado, and we'll touch back a little later, a little bit more on Vegas and NHRA because we got a lot to talk about on the championship. We got some picks to make for Ramona. But before it gets too late, uh, we have talked internally about bringing this guest on for a long time. I've been saving it. Um, he's had a huge impact in my racing career, huge impact in Lyle's career and his life. Uh, done a lot for the sport, and uh, he always tells it like it is. And if I, if you don't know anything else about Donald Long, you're about to get the truth <laughs> so let's bring home don't somebody asked me today are we getting donald long or duck well let's bring him on and see uh, which one we got <laughs> there you go. on. what's up wild <laughs> man how you doing well if we're done jerking off the slick guys let's go over a couple of facts that y'all y'all missed a little bit so today is still obviously great but uh bond went 574 247 but at World Cup, uh, Benson Jr. with a street car on radios went 569, 254. So I'm just saying, I just want to make sure that we set the record straight if we're going to be talking about all this stuff. The second so, thing I bring up, hold, hold on. You got the show all the time. This is first time. Obviously, it took me 24 freaking sessions, uh, which is, let's see, every other week. That's 48. That's almost kind of rude, a, isn't it? Almost a year. I mean, how good could I possibly be? If it took 48 weeks to get, I mean, y'all must have went through every slip tire, no prep, or, or I don't know, bicycle riding, scooter hopping, <laughs> to finally get to me, to be like, you know what? There ain't nobody else. Let's get that piece of shit Don Long on there. Let's try to see if we can boost our ratings up, because after 48 weeks, you know, let's bring them on. But, you know, while we're on that subject, since I'm going to tell you why I have a little issue with this whole deal. So I had, to go to my, I had to go to my records on what happened. So let me just go over this. I know we're all friends here and shit. But on June June 6th, I got a thing from Drag Illustrated, Wes Buck. He's like, hey, listen, you want to come on my show? You know what I mean? I want to get you on one of my episodes. I'm like, you know what, man? That would be awesome. I've been going through some stuff. But, you know, that would be awesome to get back to it, you know? So that was June 6th. That went July 6th, August 6th, September 6th. October the 9th, he sends me a message. I'm in the middle of my race. Hey, man, is there any way I can get an interview with you about the race that's going on? I said, man, I'd love to. I said, give me 15 minutes notice. I'll be. He goes, man, I'm going to get right back with you. Let's see. That's October 9th. That's November 9th. So anyway, basically what I'm saying is, is that I haven't been on a show yet, and I barely made this one 48 weeks later. 
I will say, Donald, we had a list of people that we've been thinking about. And <laughs> hey, don't be mean to me. Be mean to them. Um, and we were like, well, the time sensitive this, your boy Stevie would took it was you or nothing this week. So, so I mean so I was waiting until we did a good enough job building up our fan base to oh, roll the red oh. card out for you. So, hey, also but, to follow Scotty Cannon, we were like, who the fuck is gonna follow Scotty that Cannon? That is factual. So we like we had, long. <laughs> we we had Scotty Cannon on as we predicted, we rammed the show into the ground the next week. So I needed I needed the Jesus of Drag Radio to help bring me back to life. So awesome. besides all besides your 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 huge underlying admiration for slick tire racers <laughs> and your your known you're known admitting that they can be faster under certain conditions. Tell some of the folks that may not know who you are, tell them a little bit about you. Where'd you come from? How did you get into drag racing? What made you want to do this? So anyway, from probably time I was probably 10 or 11, my dad, obviously, you know, all Ford guy all the way Ford power. How about it? Um, Um, you know, and it's just, he's been, um, you know, drag racing when he was kid and you know how that is the whole family deal. So with my dad and, it's just one of them things when you get out there, start turning wrenches, and next thing you know, you want to, you know, go fast, burn rubber, throw some slapper bars on that thing. And um, and so that was, we were talking about this other day that um, how, like, we would work, right? Say you're making $3.35 an hour, because that's what it was, you know? So if we had a check at the end of the week, it was 150 or $200. I was sitting there working, you know, part-time going to school. Whatever it was, I spent $10 more than that on my race car. So I was always about $10 in the hole at the end of the week, no matter what. So, but, and that, I just always, I started off circle track racing, uh, actually over at, um, by Braden in there, uh, the circle track. So when I was 14, I was doing roundy round stuff over there. And, uh, but drag racing is where it's at, man. You know that. Radial racing. Radial racing is where it's at. All right, so you go racing, do some mm-hmm. rounding around, just go racing for a while. What made you, because you changed our entire sport, and I don't give a lot of people credit like that unless it's due. You really did change how our sport is ran and what people perceive about what a fair payout is. And you, I know for us small tire guys, you, you kind of put us on the map. What made you want to be a race promoter? Because that's a tough business. Well, you got to have a big old set of nuts to want to do well, that. You know, that goes back. Obviously, a lot of things in life are based off of something happening. You know, you know, there's a, there's always going to be every time something happens. You know, there's going to be a reaction to it. And so, you know, I got into a fight with those guys over there, um, not uh, the previous owners of um, Orlando. The Bith, I call them the Bithlow Basher. And um, so when uh, when I got into that stuff with those guys over there, it was basically, I mean, you guys were racing for like $1,500, a bag of Cheetos and a hamburger. And so I was like, you know, let's go ahead and step this thing up a little bit. And so the first race we did was 15 grand, which doesn't sound like a lot now, but 15 grand. Then. Yeah, 15,000 back then, it brought everybody out. You know? It changed the world. I was at that first race. I was blown away by two things, three things, the number of cars, the number of fans and how ill prepared I was to race against these type of people. I showed up thinking I was King Dingaling. And when I left, Will Stevenson had slapped the shit out of everyone with that pro charge. I rock Camaro that he had. And I told uh, all my guys, I said, we have nothing here to race against these guys. We have to go back to the drawing board. And, and you know, like with, me and you're the same like you want to get everybody together you want to find out who the baddest dude is right so and that's what i wanted to find out with the radials you know you had orska going at the time which was you know a cool you know a cool series and uh that's you know obviously david reese shane stack and those guys were over there and um i wanted to find out like who was the baddest you know and so you know i've talked a little shit every once in a while in my life and so i figured out yeah every you know great once in a while so anyway it was one of those deals where, and I wanted to pay everybody. Don't get me wrong. I love to make money. There's nothing wrong with making money. But I, at the time, you know, I still had my underground utility company. And I was just more throwing the money at it because I wanted everybody to come out there and race. And, you know, when you were in Orlando before, you know, obviously, thank God it's changed. But back in the day, you know, the radio cars were, well, I don't know, it might still be, but all the way down, Skeeter Weeds at the end, the old helicopter down there at the very end. I don't know if you remember that thing in the weeds down right. there. You know, if you didn't have some mosquito repellent and freaking first aid kit and some toilet paper with you, you know, you were in trouble out there. 
So before we get yeah. off this subject, both of my customers, we're down there by where the old helicopter was. So if you get out of the tower area, hang a left. Okay. Come okay. behind the stadium line. Come out and see us. I'll be out there cleaning the dumpsters for night. But, but I would, you know, you say something, you know, like say having, you're having nuts there for the promoter thing. But I would like to step back into that for one second because I, I want everybody to realize something. I've said this a couple of times. I don't know if I've told you this. So, and, and I'm just using these companies in, at random, right? But let's say you take ProLine, right? So you got their racer. They're going to go, they're going to pay $80,000 for, for an engine, right? Third, m and going to get 30000 for a transmission. Reese going to get 150000 for building that car. Uh, the tuners, fuel tech diner is going to get seven or 8000 And then you know what they do, Steve? They call me, right? And they're like, hey, man, listen, I just paid about $300,000. Is there any way you could help me out with a tech card? Okay. So, so I swear this happens all the time. Now this ain't no joke, right? So I'm going to pay you 30 or 40 grand if you win. Right now, don't get me wrong. You're buying a motor, good motor. You know, they're giving you good quality products. Right. But I'm the only person giving you back cash, right? 20, 30, 40, 50, hundred thousand dollars, right. To come race. And you want to come in for free. Like, Hey man, I need to get that $300 tech card. And then here's the greatest thing ever. They go do all that. They come out and they crash their shit. They're bouncing off like straight from no prep, right? Like a freaking <laughs> ping pong back and forth, oil down the racetrack. And then this is during, like, this is either first round of qualifying or testing. You know what they do? Steve? After they get that piece of shit, watered up, oil leaking junker that they didn't, get, it's on the flatbed, shit all over, and they tore up everything. Then they come over and they go, hey, man. Is there any way I can go ahead and move my tech car to the next race or get my money back for the thing? Now, every racer should know this, and I want them to understand. That's why I hope they're on here. It costs about $1,500 to $2,000 every time you bring one of those no prep leaking pieces of shit over to my track. So it costs glue. You got tractor fuel going up, diesel going up and down that damn thing. You're paying all these freaking people. And as soon as you get that piece of shit, you come rolling to me like, hey, I want to trade that tech card in for next for the next race. Bitch, you shouldn't even be allowed to come back to that next race. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, I want y'all to look at it from a promoter standpoint, right? When y'all wad up that bumble gun up piece of shit, it's like it cost me a couple thousand dollars, man. Yeah. So what you're saying is, is on top of spending a hundred grand to put on the race. And paying out a couple hundred thousand, we got some some folks wanting some free shit. Do they ever uh, when they win and you give them that tech card? They ever come bring that three hundred back? They pull that three hundred out got, the purse and hand it back to you. I got a better story. I got one for you. Steve. Oh yeah. I had, a, I had a guy right that's running an ODR back in the day, and he says, "Hey, listen." He goes, I want to get a radio versus the world tech card. And I'm like, all right, they're down at the gate. You know, they're $200 or whatever. And he goes, now, nah, can, you, can you slide me one, man? Can you slide me one? I'm like, dude, you know, I got to make this payout. Anyway, finally, being the duck I am, I give the guy the tech card, right? So then guess what happens, right? Now, I've just spent 100 grand getting there, getting my shit. Well, it pours down raining. You know, that's, that's the life of the promoter. Pours down raining. So each guy in rvw gets back 1650 dollars. i shit you not the guy that i gave the freaking tech card to comes straight up to the tower no. and he's in line oh yes he is <laughs> in line to get his 16 i'm like dude are you serious what what do you mean man what do you mean I, so not only did he take the 1650 do you think the guy even had the freaking cojones to say hey man let me give you back the 200 for the tech card. Hell no. Nah. Took my 200, my 1450, yeah. going right on out. Boy, we you should have just handed him 1450. Appreciate you coming, buddy. We need a, a radio's most wanted wall where we keep track of all this. So we can, like, when there's some shenanigans going on, we have a firm record of it. You have so that you can tower. use it as ammo. You got it all in your head. You have to build a tower. You have to build a new tower. Just to put that shit in it. We ain't got that kind of room, Steve. Really okay, so, so we get the – I was at the first race uh, that you had, the Outlaw Radio deal. I was at the first race at SGMP. The first race you ever had, I got there on a Wednesday night, and I was the only person there. Do you remember that? 
yeah, I'm sitting there with my clapped out motorhome and, and 28 foot enclosed trailer, and I was ready to race. I come and I parked right in the middle. Uh, gate was open, and and I got there on Wednesday. Everybody else started getting there on Thursday, and I was shocked a couple of years later. If you don't get there like the Wednesday before, you're parking out there in the weeds. Oh yeah. Oh, um, I've seen you win a lot at promoting. I've seen you lose your ass, and I've never seen you short anybody on any money. And there's not a lot of promoters that can say that. I was there. I've seen the rain take you out. I've seen you make a chillion dollars. How do you balance the highs and lows? <laughs> Well, here's another thing I would like to say about, um, I'm kind of glad you brought that up. It's been, you know, it's been ongoing. I've seen a couple more along the way, but here's what I, and I'm not trying to just be this way. I believe this is me personal. I believe if you're a promoter, right. And you're going to let, like you said, let the nuts hang out, right. Whatever number that you put that you're going to pay, you should have to prove that money up front with a bank account, whatever, somewhere in escrow before you even open the gate how many times how many times have you got screwed out of people go they cut the purse they do this it's 20 grand now it's 10 grand 50. i think that no matter who the promoter is or track owner you should have that money somewhere in escrow before you even get there there shouldn't be anybody leaving your race and here's another thing too and i know this is going to go over bad because i know i'm gonna look like a real if you pay cash coming through the goddamn gate right to get in you should get freaking cash when you leave right i mean if you win 20 grand you're celebrating oh, wow. and then you get to mcdonald's with that 20 dollar check i gave you right what are you buying stevie you ain't Nothing. buying shit player you can't Nothing. get an apple pie and a fry right that's, so, hey, that's cash. If they can accept it boy it's like oh yeah look at all cash and then, <laughs> the first duck race i went to i come up in the tower before the semis and donald and stephanie are literally counting cash on the pa table and i'm like this shit is fucking i'm not in the nhra that's, no right. more, so no. that's a race exactly. promoter right there exactly. i myself i will not go field a car in a race that ha does not have a guaranteed purse when i pull into the racetrack and they say if we have 16 cars we're going to pay this mm -hmm. i don't go because it's my not it's not my job to sell tech cards so i have i got caught once with my pants down in that trap and I told that man he was going to pay me or buy a new tower. And he could pick which one he wanted to get. Because it'd be cheaper it. to pay me than buy the tower. If that promoter takes in, like, I don't know, 100000 in cash. And then when you leave, you get this three-party out-of-state check with a hold on it. Something yeah. freaking shady is going on, right? I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, where'd it go? It's like Area 51 or something. The cash came in and then it, it's gone, <laughs> right? I mean. If it came in on Saturday and Sunday, you know it ain't at the bank, right? The guy, he didn't leave and go to the bank. So that money's still there somewhere. I mean, that's some like David Blaine track magic. You know what I'm saying? It's straight of street magic, track magic. So I don't know. I, I just, I, I believe in you guys should be able to celebrate, go out, have a good time. Like, uh, I think it's um, when you, um, I know you weren't driving, but when you tune, um, your boy Jared Grayling was 70 grand or something like that. You know, I mean, it, it just doesn't feel the same, Steven. One one like this, just one little piece of paper versus all of it. I don't know, man. Just, I don't I'm know. with you. I myself have been on the receiving end of several hundred thousand dollars of your money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Over the course of I the last. Of the last Neither 30, have I. Of the last 13 years. I've been um, on a couple thousand. <laughs> so... Between me and my customers, I think we've knocked you in the head for about 300. So uh, I appreciate you uh, getting all that cash and bringing it to the gate. You paid off my first house and uh, half of my second one. So I just want to say I thank you for that. Just, just an everyday saint, Donald. That's right, what you just, are. just, just, just appreciate it. Yeah, for for a while there, I had to come to your races to make payroll at my company. So I was like, Whoo. I was like, boys, my account's getting low. Yeah, get on down to that duck race. Let me get on down I seventy five. Like make me that hundred thousand. Well, we definitely would love to have you back doing some seat time in there for sure. Oh you know, boy, it's coming. Every time I go to a race, I get itchy. I'm telling you. So we we so you brought big tire. Uh, if, I'm sure most everybody knows this. If the less they're living under a rock, you brought big money payouts to small tire racing. Not only that. You have a lot of haters like I do. You might, you probably have more haters. Than I, I was going to say definitely more. 
Okay. But what nobody can deny is that you fostered and you foster and continue to foster an environment to allow people to be superstars. Before I started coming to your races, I changed oil for a living at a dealership. And what you did is you gave me a stage. You, you said, I can't win it for you, but here's this place where if you're a badass, if you got a big old set of nuts, you can put it on the nut meter. Dude, the PP can come out and you can right now. And you can kick the shit out of these folks and I'm gonna make you a superstar. There's not a lot of race promoters that take that approach. And I and I appreciate that. You know, and I and I'm glad you said it. thank you for saying that. Seriously. I you know, but here's one thing, right? So take, uh, we won't even have to throw out no, any names, okay? But let me just tell you this. Any person, the, any promoter out there, and you tell, me, you, you tell me if I'm wrong, name me a radio promoter, a wannabe radio promoter, a piggyback promoter, right, that hasn't switched out right over back to the slick. As soon as they get a chance to make some money with the slick, bam, they're right over there. Just like, a, just like one of them trans deals. You know what I'm saying? Just, just... <laughs> Right around, right? I mean, one day they got nuts, the next day they got <laughs> That's people. nuts and tits, and we're not we're gonna have a new transo meter I'm now. Telling you right now, anyone that has sat there, tried to piggyback, take all of my stuff, the first chance they get to make some shit money off of Pro Mod, no offense. Well, a little bit of offense. Pro Mod, <laughs> bam, they're gone, right? They're just anything they can do, right? And they're gone. If one thing I've always said. I don't like none of that slick tire shit. I ain't promoting none of that junk and the freaking this radial tire car to front. I said it once. And listen, you know, I know this guy, they said something about this is your boy too. Someone sent me a message, Odom Scrotum or something up there with his pro mod, no prep, whatever. But is it true that the guy took a pro mod up there to freaking MIR and got whooped up? He had big tires, wheelie bars, and all that got whooped up by Benson. Fact. Fact. I saw Factual it. statement. All right. I want to clear that so, up. So, <laughs> one more thing before I let you take back over. I'm still the trademark copyright, Stevie Fast Incorporated, Stevie Fast Jackson. I still like to get some money every time that gets said. So, me and Donald have been having a head to head war for the last 15 years. You guys don't know this, but I don't even want to say it out loud because Donald's lawyer is going to send my lawyer a freaking letter in the morning. But Donald Long created the Stevie Fast um, name. So every time I make a dollar, y'all seen that movie uh, American Gangster where homeboy <laughs> shoots a guy and he's got a tip jar and he's got to put a dollar in it? That's Donald. Every t I sold an engine last week and I I'm loading the motor in the truck and there's Donald with his little tip jar. Hey, how about that 10%? <laughs> That's you. Can I get that 10%? Dude, the Stevie Fast thing's out of control. It's warranted. It is. That's but it's like so what would stevie fast exist without donald long no or would i just be an oil change guy at the chevrolet place no, I, no, who had a fast radial tire car i don't no, know steve no, jackson would exist steve jackson would be around steve but that ain't worth shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> maybe fast jackson bam you know what i mean he's got bam on it you got bad son bitch you got who charger who charger early early in okay your Stevie, I, I, Stevie, I what? Don't wait. Let Lyle go. Let Lyle Courtney go, and then I got a question that's going to knock the internet down. Go on, Lyle. Right, go ahead. Nope. Lay it on. Yeah, no, no, Stevie. What kind of airplane would you have if it wasn't for Donald Long? He would Man, I'd be flying one around little, in a, one, one of them nineteen fifty Cessna one twenty five uh, for Micah Wood things that they had at the Circle K. <laughs> one of the balls on it. You zip it right. back. Like balsa wood. Balsa wood that goes around in circles. Yeah, boss yeah. boy, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Meow, meow. yeah, you bought half of my whole airplane and definitely paid for the annual. I ain't got to even get, go there and fly. Go to what? Huh? He, he said he paid for the annual. Oh. Uh, what you think I said? That's not what I heard. No, yeah, I bet <laughs> that's right. not what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, boy. Hey, if you don't wash your hair and take a bath more often, your mind might get in the wrong spot. All right, go Just ahead. What y'all going to say? Don't how much I wash my hair. I'm still prettier than all y'all except you, Donald. Um, there. I have a question for you for real, for real, because this world is tough. Like you came in, you had your own lane. Actually, you didn't have your own lane. You mowed it down, but you, you stick to your guns. You say what you want to say. Your shit runs the way you want to run it. And if people don't like it or tracks don't like it, you, you very smoothly tell them it doesn't matter. Was there ever a time where at the beginning you kind of thought like, 
I don't know if this is for me because I've got to kind of tone back my personality or you just didn't give a shit from the well, start. Well, you got to remember, this didn't start off about the money. I mean, things always, you know, progress and things happen. And obviously, it's great to be able to make money when things are good. But at the time, I was just donating money. It's like no different than these guys. I don't have the millions of dollars that these guys have that are throwing away money, you know, to pro mod or no prep, wasting it completely. Like, But... You know what I'm saying? The the radial guys could use some of that money. But no, I was I was putting the money in there. Um, it wasn't it was really just more just sponsor and stuff because I wanted it to, you know, and it wasn't. But, you know, later on, it was like I told everybody, hey, listen, I'll keep doing it, but I'm not going to do it for free. Like I can't promote for seven months. Right. Right. And then what, all you're doing, this is all you're doing. You're taking a hundred grand. Right. You're going in there and you're going, I'm going to put that on. Uh, I'm going to just set that on black and spend it because. It's it's no different. You're 50. Johnny Finn told me that, you know, and, and he was right. You know, you're you go in there and you could you could promote who else are any of y'all or any of you guys going to work at your job for seven months. Right. And at the end of that seven months, they go, oh, you know what, Courtney, I'm sorry. We're, maybe we'll get you next time. You know what I mean? So, like, are you willing to, to do something for five, six, seven months and go in there and get absolutely not or go in there and lose 30 or 40 thousand dollars? Because that's. It could happen, you know, and that's why I think people should should at least be able to come up with enough money to pay the person before they go. In there. So you think we need an escrow, a promoter escrow account? I agree. Or we can square that deal up. I think that I think that we will figure out who's dragging the nuts and who's um, just the trans. You know what I mean? Maybe they don't have the nuts they're dragging. Maybe they they want people to think they got some nuts. There's a lot of that going on. But Nut poser. <laughs> I'm just saying that shouldn't they be able to pay it? That's all. I mean, if only say, I mean, listen, no one's going to probably not not come. You know, if you go, hey, man, listen, I want to pay 15000 to win. But if you put up 30 or 40 or 50 grand, whatever the number is, you should be able to pay it. Yeah. You made a good comment. I liked what you said, Stevie. Like, I'm, it's not my job to sell tech cards. Right. I show up and bring the show. I don't have to sell a tech card. Um, Wild, do you have something or can I break the internet? Go ahead. Okay. All right. There has been throughout the last 15 years, this staunch rumor that you created RVW for me. All right. And that, that throughout the years, many different times, some backdoor shit has happened. Do you want to clear there or any, what we'll call confusion about RVW and, uh, or really any class in any backdoor, uh, underhanded shit? Let me just, let me just, this, this has been a really bad subject for me. I wish you would even brought this up. So every time I hear that bullshit, right? Here's the whole thing. Stevie ain't never, doesn't ever call me about rules, right? It's just like, and I'll give you another example too. Where we got, um, they cry and bitch and moan about Mo Hall too, right? Mo Hall does not ever call me about rules. I'll get 20 calls from somebody else. It's just like with your deal, right? You don't call me and ever complain or cry about the rules, but everybody who doesn't like you calls about trying to get a hundred rule changes. You know, and we had an incident and it was, you know, and I've talked to him about this several times, right? Stevie comes out there. He's got a, you know, a, a max effort combination, max effort transmission. But then we have other people that come out and they don't have a max effort transmission. They don't have a max effort blower, they, whatever the deal is, right? And they want to complain about Stevie. And then come to find out two years later, all they do is swap a couple things around, bam, they're right back up front, you know? So I have never, ever created a rule for Stevie Jackson. But Stevie Fast just bust your ass. That's all it is, is that he, it was goes back to the Nitrous deal, right? Your girl, oh I, can't, I can't think of the girl's name, not a lady, her husband, Who? EDRA. And she was like, just running her mouth that Stevie was never going to go freaking 60 whatever with that nitrous deal right and stevie said if i don't go 63 i'll move out of this country so i go post all this shit up next thing you know stevie i'm just blow right on past all that shit like it wasn't even wasn't even we, bad. Then, we went 60 by accident on the way to the 50s i was like yeah. damn we then, missed that one then i had a five thousand <laughs> then i had a five thousand dollar bet with another guy no prep guy and freaking Still ain't got paid for that. I ain't, I still ain't. Time. I still ain't got that twenty five hundred from that either. So I, I'm just telling you, I don't have to make rules for Stevie because you know what Stevie told me. This is what Stevie told me, and this is the best ever. He said, "You make the rules, I'll pick the combination I think's the best, and I'm coming." 
That's what he says. So there you go. And that's heads up racing matter. at its best. And what's even better yet, I don't even know if Courtney knows this deal because you're a little young, Courtney. I'm not sure you was on this one. Have you Listen, ever seen, I think I'm older than you think I am. Have older you ever me. seen Stevie come to the track with like a pro charger car, right? Tear that all to pieces, go home, swap the bitch all around with the same car with a whole nitrous combination or something. They come right back with that too. I mean, not just swap the motor train. We're talking about complete everything. Swaps. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys know that, but I blew up my Pro Charger car one time at Valdosta, left, drove home, rewired the car, installed a 632 nitrous engine, came back and won the race. That's because you're stubborn as shit. That's because somebody told me I couldn't do it. Exactly. I was like, bitch, I'll show you. I'll be back in about 12 hours. And uh, that was... <laughs> It took four hours to get home. There was wire nuts everywhere. We ratchet strapped a bottle rack in the trunk. Ratchet there was strap. nothing legal about any of the safety. You talk about NHRA throwing some safety out. There was no safety equipment in that unit. We stuck a Nerf ball in the Pro Charger inlet, saw the hole in the hood. That was good. That was good times. No, that was that was definitely. <laughs> but but yeah, I just wanted the rule deal. Stevie says just make the rules. I'll pick the combination that I think's the best, and I'm coming. So. Everybody else, the people who call you, this is always the greatest. And there are no prep now, too, but let me give you my favorite one. Hey, Doug, man, I just wanted to call and, you know, see how the family's doing, man. How's the uh, wife, man? How's yeah. the kid? The dog's okay and all that, too? Oh, hey, man, by the way, I need to see if I can get 75 pounds of weight off. They don't care about me. Nobody cares about Doug. They care about whatever I can do to just type a couple buttons in and take some weight off of it. That's it. So what I you're feel, saying I is you have – you have uh, you have some unfair, uh, non-authentic affection coming your way before the crime. See, I just call you and I'm like, "What are you doing, you sorry bastard?" Yeah, like I'm straight up. What's going on? I don't right say, thing. "How's your mama and them?" Like, yeah. what you been up to? Dude. Did you plant a garden this spring? And Courtney, where were you at the last race? Don't try to freaking get out of that shit, neither. I'm not trying to get out of it. Um, Don O'Neill came, which now is employed by Stevie Fast Jackson. But um, there was there you there go, thirty percent. He needs that. You there was it. a um. I'll be, I'll what be totally she's trying honest. to say is she she's a slick tire. No, coverage lady. no. What you she's shut your mouth say. and let me speak. My turn. Donald Long asked me a question. I'll be talking now. Um, mm -hmm. We for this this pro race that we're doing, we're doing a road to the con like road to the race content series. Oh. And the only time that I could go get all those nitro MFers in the same room was that Dallas week. So I had to go to Stampede to Speed and shoot all week long. I'll tell you, it was one of the worst weeks of my life. I had about 17 mental breakdowns. I don't say this very much, but I would have rather been there than in Dallas, Texas that week. It was fucking awful. But uh, we had to get it done, and we got to learn how to do content lead up for big races coming forward. So uh, it was kind of our experiment, and it's just the way it yeah. worked. So Stevie, instead of right, instead of doing someone who's been with them the whole time, right, right, who just so had it, we're not going to do no content lead up to that. See, so that's another deal where you get thrown to the curb. You see what I'm saying? You get kicked to the curb. No, to watch, to watch the Bro, same for it. To watch the same for it. bullshit that you guys watch every freaking Sunday already. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm it's sorry, Clay. I did a piece with Clay. I'm sorry, Clay. I didn't mean same, it, but it's the same shit all the time. You know what I mean? So, what is the I mean, biggest? Let me ask something. What exactly are they going to be running? Like, it's going to be any different than watching NHRA every Sunday when I fall asleep? It's it's, it's, it's no, it doesn't. You see what I'm saying? But they could have said, you know what? We got this guy who's really put a bunch into it. It's on there. Push and flow all the time. You know what we should do? Let's do a huge ass build up to lights out. Something that someone designed by themselves didn't go. Hey, you know what? What is NHRA? Have? Oh, you know what? I'll just take all their shit and put that over there and put that right on. No, I'm with you, Doug. And we'll say this right on air right now that we got one innovator. And, this is and, and, and where are my people at? I so what it. I need you to do, and I, I may get in trouble for this. A walker doing what I need you to up. do is send me a shit talking fucking email, and I can get it to go. I can get it to go. I'm corporate Courtney now. We can make it work. But pro, I, I think you just pro, send them a clip of this show. This show. Pro, <laughs> I think you just hack that out and send let, that right on. Let, let, me, to the top. let me at least say this: the race promoters that are putting this on 
led up this content series. This isn't Flo's deal, but Flo is going to take what we learned from here, figure out a way to budget it into the rest Flo of them. But what? No. No. No, what? What would she say? What? What, 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 what? <laughs> is it, we'll, figure, it we'll figure it out. Unfortunately, you know, squeaky, here, squeaky here's girl. the thing. This is what's even funnier, Steve. About a year ago when I'm on the phone with them, a year or two ago, whatever, right? And everybody's like, <laughs> hey, what are ideas? And I'm like, you know, because I'd heard about the circle track and all that. I'm like, listen, man, well, this is what me and Linko used to do. We want to go around, shop, the shop, the shop. Dude, that's been two years ago, right? All of a sudden now, guess what's happening? Oh yeah, look, we're gonna do this build up over here, right? Or just ride on by duck. Didn't even see me, blinders and shit. Just like didn't even beep when they drove by your house, did they? Didn't even beep when they backed up, hit me. I hear you. I hear you, duck. I really have. And I have. And like I said, what are we gonna see? The same. The only thing we're missing is Brian Lowe. If 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 Brian Lowe's at a voiceover and just stuck it in the tower, we'd be watching the same shit. And I don't watch the. I promise it will. The racing may be the same. But what you see on the show will be different because we don't have to deal with Fox. I will say I am I am proud of that in a sense of where they're letting me do things that we're not allowed to do anywhere else because pro- well, maybe one day, Stevie. First it was no prep, now it's this. You know, I'm what just I'm a corporate girl trying to make a buck, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so besides uh, everybody uh, trying to sabotage your whole promotion deal because they don't care about what you What's that shit? Door door getting fired tomorrow. Either, Stevie. It probably ain't huh? even, no, hardly no door card. It's probably a bunch of shit. Nobody can even think about freaking like. Do it. Will there be any power adder door cars there? Where? At the at the pro race? Any power adder door cars? I, there? I don't know, but it, listen. We're going to know very, door, very soon. Let me tell you something. Anything that's got freaking doors, if that bitch is a door car and it's on slicks, it's got action that lights out for however much money. I don't Ooh. give a flying shit. That oh bitch is got, that's you too, Lyle. Drag that bitch out. Ripped me, sister, Donald. Her sister and that gear jamming motherfucker <laughs> should bring that thing too. <laughs> give a crap about we- none of that. Pro this, pro stock, pro mod, pro this, pro that. Is that... Do you want to Richard accept Freeman? Richard oh. Freeman, I guarantee you would love to freaking come do that yeah, shit. I would take that RBW car and slap them around like a little girl. No offense, Courtney. I was gonna say that I'm only offended <laughs> because she is a girl, but she ain't no little girl. Um, <laughs> Stevie, here, can, I want you to set the record straight right now. This is this is me and you talking right now. And the world. Ready? Yeah. All right, this. Lane prepped the baddest that there is, right? For a radio car. This one prepped the baddest with a slick car. If you're going to go to baddest, the fastest you've ever been in your life with a door car, any weight, what's going to go fastest? Radial tire by about 12 to 13 hundos. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Period. And and, and case case in point, we still got the top, the two quickest nitrous passes ever in the world, and we did it with like a old clapped out Corvette back in the nineties. And so, we're they're still trying to get there. Is it fair to say that we should freaking put these guys together? And as soon as radio proves, because see, pro mod means pro modification, like it's the baddest modification you can make, right? Pro mod, right? I think the pro should be xed off of it for good and just call them mods if they can't freaking do it. If they can't beat a radio car, then it's mod from here on out. <laughs> oh, the, the hate and the truth flying around on this one is, is going to be it good. Is, insane, it right? is. I mean, okay. A pro modification if it ain't the fastest. Well, you would have to average ET over a season. What? You. Well, what I'm getting at is you want to compare, and, and I got to take devil's advocate here because I'm a radio guy, huh? <laughs> you, you're not the, – the radial tire is built to take advantage of a racetrack that the slick tire can never take advantage of. And I'm a radio guy. I'm just oh, hold you. on a minute. Hold on a second. I'm telling you. Wait, hold, hold on. So when you were little growing up and you got ready to freaking race the kid – on foot across the street, right? Right, right. I did that a lot. You, I mean, you don't want the best possible condition. I mean, you want, you're going to go, right? You don't care. This guy got to have this. This guy got to have that. You don't need all that shit. 
I, I mean, think you want to run out need... and pitches and back up and, and all that. No, I mean, if you're going to a drag race, right, shouldn't it be – can you be going in the 60s go, well, you know, I drag race, but your lane's prep too good. You, you know what I'm saying? No, because you freaking go in there, you hit it, bam, you let it go. And the first, it doesn't matter. I'm going to let you guys – or I'll say you – I'm going to let the slick guys prep the lane any way they want to. They can have the greatest slick tire prep in the history of freaking prepping. I should be able to prep my lane the way I want mine, right? Nobody's saying don't give you the absolute greatest. You can have the traction twins. You can you have all of them out there, right? All of them. I just need right. one. Do you one. foresee, do you foresee in the future a one shot, one kill? Radial tire, car, match race, grudge race versus a one shot, one kill, whoever's the baddest on slicks. Would Donald I'm Long ready, promote I'm, that? I'm ready to do it for 200 grand. I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm ready to pay $200,000. Right. If, if I knew that those slow ass piece of shit little wussies from no prep and pro mod and all that junk would show up, I'd put that 200 grand up and freaking bury their freaking shit in the ground. But you know what's going to happen? I'm going to be paying my radio guys 200 grand because they're going to make every, oh my God, I got to change my tire. I got to do this. You ain't got to change nothing. You ain't got to change shit. Leave your car just like it is. Matter of fact, open up them boost controllers, all that fake ass. I got to get in there and all the boost controller, all that, run whatever you want to. Them pulleys, I don't care how big, how small, whatever you want to do with it. Put them in there, add some extra nitrous to it, all that shit. But I just want to be able to take my car and just whoop the hell out of y'all one time. Just boom, it's done. But if you're going to do that for 200, I need you to give me about 90 more days. I need about 90 days notice well, on that. that. My question was going to be what time of year, when is this going to happen? Is it midnight in October? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I said, is it midnight in October? Are we running this in July. It doesn't. Why does it matter? You, aren't you wanting to find out who's the baddest? Or do you want to, I mean, hell, yeah. I'll just freaking water down the track, too. Let me throw some oil out there. So we can soap dirty this thing back and forth, act like them freaking idiots, them street idiots, and no prep. Or do we want to find out once and for all who's the baddest dude in the world? I mean, that's what it's about, right? I mean, let's get the ideal conditions. You can prep your track any way you want to. We'll prep Midnight more. in October, Lyle. That's what I'm saying. I mean, let's just do it on July 4th in the middle of the heat. That ain't going to go well for your radio guys. Well, them slow ass slicks. I'm about ready to put X275 up against them. Oh, I, oh. I thought it was going to take, I thought it was going to take Radio versus the world. I really did, right? But it's almost Pro 275 now. I mean, a little bit further, man, and then it's going to be all over. So, well, <laughs> it won't be long. You're going to have a couple of different looking RVW cars back out. I don't want to say real RVW cars, but there's there's about to be a couple of real RVW cars coming back. So we'll see how we'll see how the how that changes. Well, anyway, I'm ready to do that race for 200 grand. That's all I'm gonna tell you. So, but here's the thing: I don't think those Stevie. I swear to God, what are they? They've got. They really have. They're all multi-millionaires, right? They're all freaking. Lear jetting it around and their Rolls Royces coming in and their stackers and all that shit. Listen, if you show up, no offense to now, y'all, but if you got like 12 crew members and the shit gets brought to the track for you, I mean, come on, does it really matter at that point? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the program I run with. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, all I'm saying is, I don't think, I think they got anything to lose and nothing to gain, Stevie. I mean, here's the thing if they come over to get their ass whooped, they know I ain't gonna shut up till whatever. I, when I'm in the gray, like I'll be in my casket. Oh, I got whoop. You got a whoop. You know, I'll be all over them still, right? But they got nothing to gain, Steve. They got everything to lose. They're gonna one gain the, whooping. That's all they're gonna gain to ask for. Um, one thing that Phil Schuler told me that was absolutely true a long time ago is he said the worst thing that anybody can ever do is let Donald Long be right. <laughs> he well, said, because you will never take your foot off the gas. When we come out with that nitrous car and you told them what I was going to do and I told them what I was going to do and we came out and did it, man, it was crickets. And Phil, that's when Phil told me, he said, man, you can't let that man be right. <laughs> yeah. He's never going to get off your ass. Um, 
<laughs> before we get too far off, I would like to know, because for especially us radio guys that started on radio that had to deal with this insurgent of uh, these supreme beings of racers, uh, I call them UFOs sometimes. All we heard about was that these TV stars were coming into drag radio and destroying the field. What is Duck's opinion on the no prep movement and uh, their place in, in radio tire racing? I think I just had a movement. <laughs> <laughs> I am just thinking about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I just snorted. Well, what that happened? I just, I just know that they, they uh, I was there for a lot of it when they were coming in to kick the shows. I was just curious how it ever worked out and what you think about it. Well, just so you, real quick, Tidwell just said he promises you ain't going to be the fastest Fredo versus the world car next year. So I'm just throwing that out there so you know. Only, there's that. only one way to find out. <laughs> we're going to find out. <laughs> there's uh, only one way to find out. I got to get oil pressure, and then anybody's got action just like they always had action before. Right. It's easy for a bear to be in the woods by himself talking trash. When there's two bears it's, in there, it's a little different. You're going to be completely like toasted by the time we get done with this. Oh, yeah, we're working on it. This is oh, the Oh, yeah, the last, the last 20 minutes are just fucking mayhem. <laughs> Stevie, what was the question again? Bunch of I want to know people. what your opinion is on the no prep movement and how they were coming in to ransack the drag radio and what happened and why they're not seem to be around radio anymore. Listen, and... And I know I'm going to take some shit. 99% of any no prep racer is a racer who can't make it in the real world of drag racing. It's really like vagrants, has Brent Benz. It's stuff to where, you know, they, they really don't know what they're doing. So it's like they, they come over here and they, they can't qualify. They're like 33rd, 34th qualifier, right? And then they go over to slip and slide and they're like, oh, man, look at me. You know, they're bouncing off like a pinball machine and, and you know went around right and so it you know on, you know, people say oh I don't think it's good for the sport you know good for I, I mean the fans right I've said it before they're vagrants delinquents Cheeto eating bitches a Milwaukee <laughs> drinking it's like it's I mean there's piss and shit all over the place Cheeto dust I mean it's really it's freaking really horrible man to be honest with you you ever try to clean up after them people no 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 and, and listen, and I talked to the people, you know, I talked to them also, the, um, uh, some of the, the sponsors come up, you know, and they're like, yeah, I went to the thing. They go, ain't one person on that property could afford to buy any parts off of them, right? They all going to come get a t-shirt, right? Hey, they got a t-shirt or a beer holder. And like, that's what they sell there, right? That's what they sell because those fans are so jacked up in the head, man. I, I don't even, it's, it's it's disturbing, but here's my problem with it too. Right? How how many deaths? I know this is a bad thing, but how many deaths on the street could probably be attributed to no prep slash that whole thing? Right? How many accident people have been ran over, killed, and all that on the street? I wonder how much of that stuff has happened that really has only happened because of this no prep yeah. racing stuff. Um, I often wonder, you know, I have a lot of hate on that side of the deal. And the majority of folks do not know that it's a TV show on a closed road. And they, you know, I, I don't have any statistics on what you're talking about, but there is a lot of confusion in the fan the, from the fans of what's that actually happening. Well, smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know about the show. I'm just the whole no prep thing of being dangerous and bringing like street racing. And, you know, it's like, listen, Back when people was going 1250s, you know, slick guys were going 1250s, you know, it ain't like now how fast, you know, people can go out there, you know, if you're on the street, you know, get a good radio car or something fast, you know what I mean? That thing, you know, let loose out there. So, but I just, I think it's dangerous for, I think that, I think that, um, I think there should be disclaimers on stuff too, you know, maybe, you know, saying, because people, like you said, the, some of these fans aren't smart enough. I, I hate to say that. The ones I got are some intelligent bitches. But whatever they got over there in, in La La Land, Candy Land, whatever, it's like they're just the intelligence level. It's like maybe they don't go to school or something. I'm not. I'm not real sure. But I can tell you right now, there's no way they graduate. That's a hundred percent. Even up in Chicago and all that, we're going to take the reading and writing out. 
They, those no prep fans still ain't gonna freaking be able to get through that. I'm just telling. You. <laughs> uh, your your army, your proportion of hater to to a uh, friend Ooh, yeah. and foe doing like this. Hey, truth, if you uh, believe it, I've always said, and Phil Schuler agrees. It's how you feel. Don't be scared to say it. So how long is not. I can't even. You know what? Maybe I should have my. Should I hit comments? Somebody say something bad about me. Never, Donald. Oh, never. Yeah. Listen, you've never, just, you've listen, never had a hater. This is a big thing, you two. We got to definitely give um, our boy Nate Crater a shout out for the Burnout for Kids deal. Uh, yep. December the 16th. 16th. You were at that last uh, last year with me. We had a lot of fun. Yep. Well, I'll we be were there again. 50, we were like, yeah. Hey, Don, we, uh, Donald shows up with this automatic money shooting machine gun. And he's like Santa Claus out there. He's got all the kids trying to beat the crap everybody because he keeps shooting all the kids. I would like a lot to complain on that deal, too, now that you brought that up. So I was out there having fun. Courtney, you was there, right? Or no? No, I've never no. been. No, that Just was another one of those times where you left me hanging. I remember now. Um, so anyway... We're out there, right? And just, I'm just picture start all, drinking out of this. Yeah, picture a whole bunch of little kids that me and Stevie lie. We're all trying to give them money, right? But I look down there, and I guarantee you, there's a 40, 50 year old, no prep fan woman that's there, and she is knocking the kids down. And you just know she's searching for them Cheetos and freaking just knocking, knocking the little kids. Hold on, I dropped one. Um. Anyway, I'm back. The, anyway, and she's scrounging up all these little kids' money. I just, I, I knew right then. It's like, it, it's like, it's like, no prep. Like, it, did it, she it, have on a? Did she have on an MPK shirt? It said something about Doofy Dave or something like that on it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Something like that. <laughs> I do remember that, and that actually is a true story. Doofy Dave, so. <laughs> so we just got out of no mercy had some challenging weather good show uh, a bunch of fans how do you judge a race whether or not success or not besides just the gate like how do you when you go home i know if you're like me it takes about two days for you to decompress and figure out what you're doing with your life how do you as a promoter call it a win or a loss well anytime a radio call car comes up and i have a tingle in my pants i'm like that counts this is this that's, is that's a winner you know what i'm saying so you know, and you start getting the tingle just the whole time, and it's like, oh, look out, you know? So, listen, here's the whole deal. I I love all those guys. I love the radial racing, and it doesn't matter. You know, I'm going to – good weather, bad weather, any way I can get it done, and we're going to find out. Uh, it was still some of the – this is what – we went through some bad weather, right, a couple of days. But when we got into that Saturday, and the Saturday night and all that, it was honestly some of the best racing that I've seen in a long time. So – you know, I had a good time with the competitiveness uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So I was, I was really, it, it, you know, on that part, you're going to win some and lose some. It's like you said earlier, right? How do you, you manage? It's like, you just got to know, man, that, you know, there every once in a while, something bad is going to happen. You just want to try to do the best you can, you know, get everybody to come out, you know, um, lights out, it's usually a great show. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, we got some, um, now we got new owners there. You know, Ozzy and was great too, but they're, you know, Raul and his wife are on the property, you know, so they're there every day, day in, day out. And um, they, it, they're they really trying to do a really good thing. I'm hoping we can get maybe some of the regular, all of my, almost all of our spectators, you know, see, we come from out of town. We don't right. have a ton, like, you don't just open up the gate at Valdosta and get 3,000 Valdostans right. freaking rolling. <laughs> hey, it just doesn't happen, right? I made that up. That's trademark. Um, like CV Past? Just like Steve Fast Decker. Yeah. It hey about also way, way back in the day, right? So Linko Jim, after the Stevie Fast thing, he goes up. He goes, You ever seen Stevie Jackson? You ever seen how many teeth? He's got like a piranha. And uh, he would smile like Stevie without like eighty five teeth coming off that one side. That's uh Linko Jim's piranha. That's that's where the nitro piranha come from. So my KTR logo that has the fish, that's the nitro piranha. Yeah, also so inspired gonna, by Lenko. Also, every one of those stickers we sell, I need 35%. Yeah, I'm, I'll tell you just like I did the last 15 years. If you'll show up on Monday and take 30% of the loss I take racing cars for a living, I'll give you 30% of the profit. You know, that's a good deal. I would pay the interest fee on every one of them. I get a shot at that money. Huh? Donald, have you, have you opened up your Facebook in the past few days and seen any uh, – <laughs> 
any stunt man okay. shenanigans so listen, going on at the restaurant. Just I, yes I, or no. I, Just I, yes or no. Just yes or no. Uh, no, I, I didn't. Okay. But I did hear about that stupid trans evil Knievel whatever crap they got going on today. I, I honestly I try to block all that nonsense. I'm in the real real drag racing. So I kind of try to block off the freaking uh, Joey Chipwood freaking uh, stunt show or whatever they got going on. So, but I did, however, talk to Stevie earlier. I can't see that. I'm just answering comment questions. Oh, okay. it's my was that? If you refer to anything that has to do with nuts, balls, ball sack, anything PP related, I I count it. Oh, okay. we count. It's the winner meter. Yeah, it's a wiener meter. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Matt, do you have a clip right. of that? Of that? Well, 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 then. Um, so what what I'm saying is is that they're honestly I shouldn't even give them the time, but Stephanie did screenshot a picture of Superman or something and <laughs> in the back of a freaking S ten or Chevy Love truck or whatever they got going on. So at, but no, I didn't see it yet. But I saw Stevie though on top of his today. So but so what happened exactly? Tell me what exactly what happened. I'll let Matt, one of you two field this one. Matt, Matt, do you have that clip? Let's watch it. Yeah, if we if we have that, yeah. we'll uh Yeah, we got it. You ready? Fire it up. <laughs> Does that happen at a Donald Long race? Oh, that's big negative, Stevie. Um <laughs> So, you know, here's the whole thing. I, I did hear somebody said that um, the track, I think it was Stephanie, told me that they dropped the sanctioning from whatever that sanctioning body was today over that deal from, from uh, uh, Darwin, right? Yep. So my question is, too, did you hear, did you hear this? I'm assuming that's no prep or slick, right? But here's the whole thing. Did you hear all the fans? Like, that's how dumb they are, right? They're like, they oh, I'm going to be next. I'm next. I'm next. You know, probably some shit like that. And it's like, I just, I, I don't get it, man. You you don't think this is dangerous for, for kids, though? Well, that people, you can always tell people that have not been around a lot of race cars by how close they'll stand to a race car. Yeah. Okay. When I'm up on the starting line, and somebody comes in the water box, you'll generally see me step in between the wall because I have watched dozens and dozens and dozens of cars blow up in the water box, crash into the wall, take people out, shoot parts off behind them. You won't see me standing beside one or behind one or in front of one while it's running. So when you see people that close to a race car that's running, they haven't spent a lot of time around one. And, and I, we've argued, cussed out. I've been like threatened everything, trying to get people off the starting line at Valdosta, right? right. And it takes the act, it, it, I swear it takes the act of Congress to get people to actually, you got to throw the reds on, you got to go down there. I mean, why should we have to go down there with seven or eight people to try to save their lives? You know what I mean? But like you said, it can blow, the motor could blow up, you know, lash cap, I've seen the motorcycle blow up the lash cap, you know, like a, like a gun go through people. Um, I just don't understand why people want to do, I mean, I don't know who invented standing in front of the race car when it's doing the burnout coming at you. And then you notice how they always try to step out of the way, Stevie, at the last. Well, I it see it a lot in pro stock. So yeah. they'll do it in pro stock. It's like, they're, you know, the bull where the bull guy's got the little thing like Toro, Toro, and the bull's <laughs> coming at him. Yeah, that's what it's like. See, you know, I see it in the pro stock a lot. They try to stay there until that thing's about three inches away from them. Well, you know, here's the thing. And I'm not, like, trying to be, like, I'm not trying to be funny about it. But you can pull that off with a slick tire deal, right? And I, I'm not saying because they're slow, they are. But I'm not saying nothing about how slow pieces of shit or nothing like that. I'm being totally straight up serious, right? But you try that on a radio track, and Lyle and the, Courtney, you know, you stuck to the track like you like a fly, like you're dead stuck on that thing, right? You get hurt out there trying that stuff. I mean, don't put your foot out there and say, come right here. Uh, you know, no. might not be pulling that foot back. You know? You'd be done lost that thing. You better get a crutch. Yeah, you might want to. Yeah, you be you're, you have a hurt wing when that's over with. I promise you. <laughs> that was my favorite part of World Cup Finals this week was watching all the idiots get stuck out there. I loved it. Yeah. Love it. You know, there was a guy this last race. Y'all might have. Uh, did y'all hear us over to Intercom trying to get a guy a set of crutches? This I heard something about somebody stole a sign, and we did we find the sign thief? 
no, no. Guy, this, one, this one was the guy who wanted some crutches. He had actually broke his foot since he oh, got really? there. But you think he's going to leave to go get something like that? No. Now, we're racing, bro. All right? We're racing. So anyway, we're trying to find a guy crutches to be able to get around. It was literally, it was broke though, man. It was really a bad, a bad thing. But I don't know. Some of you guys are die hard, man. It's the second well, time I've got I've a seen question right here. What vehicle. are your thoughts on the diesels? Uh, you had five racers, if I'm not mistaken, attempt uh, two, and uh, then they want to know where beer money's next time. But what do you think about the diesels that are starting to, to populate your race? I just think it's kind of cool because I would have never thought that ten or fifteen, you know, twenty years ago. You really, you know, people would tell you all oh, these things are made for torque, for pulling, for all this and that. You really, you know, you really didn't see the kind of deal like, um, you know. And here's the whole thing too. What, what's all this? Is, oh, I love this about rules too, Stevie. Right. So you can have this diesel thing, and when Milliken all them are blowing the heads off of it, knocking the sleeves out of it, and it's blowing up every run, the rules are perfectly fine. Matter of fact, if y'all want to. Take some weight off those diesels. See if you can give them a hand, you know, hand or whatever, right? As soon as any combination runs good, right? All of a sudden, I started getting, hey, um, you know, I think you know, like a dual power adder, car, you know, all that. So like, it's perfectly fine for five years worth of burning up three hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. As soon as the guy runs good, it's like, ah, I don't know, man. I think we need to put a hundred on him. How many? Yeah, that son of a bitch already weighs thirty five hundred. Yeah, no. <laughs> So, what is next for Donald Long? Where are you going? What's your future look like? Where do we go from here? That's a good question. Man. I would love to tell you that I don't know. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be here. Like, hopefully on the planet. <laughs> I mean, like on the yes, earth? Or like, yeah. yeah, and I've been talking about this, obviously, for a long time. Um Man, I just don't know, Stevie. I mean, I, I feel a little better about it, like, this year. Um, you know, I had a really great time, you know, at No Mercy and stuff. Um, but I don't know. I'll tell you this. Before I leave, I, I don't know. I might be here for two years or, or whatever, three. But I promise you, before I leave, and Tidwell just texted me again, you know, I want to get – I'm listen, if we could get just the – and I know someone's just going to try to piggyback and steal my shit. I'm suing as soon as somebody does it, too. Especially if it's Stevie Jackson. Fast, Jackson. Jackson I was going to say. Anyway, I don't want to have to pay myself. So, anyway, I want to do the, like he was saying, we can do eight and eight. But I want eight of not just eight, like, NHRA Pro Mods, right? I want, I want to keep hearing about that. That 348 or what, like every time an RVW car goes 349, I got to throw weight on them to slow them back down, right? And these right. guys really believe that that 348, that Phantom Run, Brad Edwards, Huntsville Roll, freaking uh, 348 of um, uh, who did that? Who who ran that? That was Frankie the Madman Taylor yeah, in Frankie Rockingham Taylor. 2014. Let me just thinking. tell you something. How fast, if I let them go, Stevie, how fast will an RVW car, is it, what's it capable of going if we let the reins on them? Almost. 330s. 330s. Yeah. They, they think in their mind, these are this is no prep mentality, slick tire, no prep mentality, is that that 348 is some untouchable number. The only reason I ain't touched it is because I've held everybody back from just destroying that record. But here's the thing about that. Once we do that, right? Once we open Pandora's box and just destroy that shit, right? I don't even know if anybody's even going to turn on no freaking pro mod racing. And I don't, that's the whole thing. I'm, I'm trying to say that's all it is. Like, so what you're saying is don't, no long is here for the people. You're here for the sport. Yeah, because I could have destroyed all that shit a long time ago, right? And then everybody be like, now how does that stock looking street car on radials destroy Frankie <laughs> Taylor's Freaking sixteen hundred fifty pound, freaking triple blower with the nitrous on it or whatever he's got in there, it's a gas mixture. And freaking like, you know, what I mean, where would we go though? If if we if we if if I let you loop, Stevie, and you go out there and go three thirty five, right? Three forty five, whatever. I mean, what? It's gonna be all over. It would if be. Go, if you go three forty flat, right? What's gonna? What do they got left? To, then what is it? They're gonna have to try to pull out um, funny cars against you. Yeah, like what's next? 
I'm yeah, serious. I'm would, it not, would, is, would it hurt the sport? I guess it's – Yes. That? Yes. It would yes. hurt the sport because the eternal door car record would be done. Okay? No more pursuing that. Um, you're going to hurt a lot of people that have, like, nitro funny cars feelings. <laughs> all the alcohol guys be mad at you. And all the promo guys be mad at you. The biggest thing is is – it would make radial racing less exciting going forward, and that would hurt the sport. That's why I think I but, didn't do it my last year or something. But when you do it, I'm going to win it. So you can go ahead and put my name on the trophy. And pay yourself because you're going to ride fast. Yeah. So pay you, can go ahead and go, you can go ahead and take that 30% out and, and give me that trophy. When you decide to ram it all the way in the ground, I'm going to be jumping on your back. Let's sink this ship. Yeah. Well – but I, but I am serious. Do you really feel that way? Because I, I'm serious. I have felt that it could be damaging. Because, I mean, Pro Mod's cool, man. Y'all have a great time with it, you know. And and best thing you can do is keep it in a quarter mile so you don't look embarrassed and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So keep it in a quarter mile where no one really knows anything about those times. Because if you bring it if you bring it down to the eighth mile, people are going to try to start relate. They're going to be like, how's this Pro 275 car? Not running this promo, you know what I'm saying? You got stuff like that. We don't want that, you know. So keep it in a quarter mile, and it, and it's it is a great class, you know. It's fun if you want to do that kind of thing, and freaking. But I think that would it not hurt it though? I mean, I know you said that, but do you really believe that that it would? I do believe it would hurt it, and you know, I get asked all the time about why our RVW screw cars can't quite run with the pro chargers. And the reason is, is because if you allow the screw blower to run at the weights they get to run at, or if you took all the rules off of it, there is no more efficient power adder in the world than a screw blower. If there were no rules, there would be no pro chargers, no nitrous cars, no roots blower cars, no turbo cars, nothing else. It'd be only screw blower. So for everybody that's hating on why the screw hasn't been winning enough, it's because it's restricted to a point of oblivion. If you take the gloves off and let me run a screw blower with no rules, not only am I going to destroy the door car work record, destroy the RVW record, but nobody else is going to come. It'll be just me and you. <laughs> so but if, unless we want to have a race with me and you, and I like you, but I don't want to come have a race with you're just there. Uh, we don't need to do that for a while. Well, I agree. That's why I haven't done anything with it yet. I mean, if I had, if I had eight, Frankie Taylor, like forget Pro Mod. Like, what what do you call like what he was running though? Didn't Pro Extreme, Pro Pro so, Extreme back then. So if we had eight Pro Extreme cars and it wasn't affecting other people's, you know, fun they're doing, and I had eight badass Pro Extreme, give me eight badass RBWs, and that's and I'd do it. That'd be pretty awesome. Can I yeah. captain the team? Can I lead the 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 lead the great American hope? Yeah, you can do that. You can't use the term Stevie fast. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man, that's 30% me to death. And I, I feel right, like you owe him back pay. Courtney, Wait, you know, one, one day. Before we go, Stevie, do you, Courtney, do you know how the Stevie fast actually came about? I do not. So, no. Yankee, Dave, no. Yankee Dave Hans used to run a race up there, uh, Shakedown at E-Town. Yeah, yep. which you know it's a great race. You know it actually sucks because they did put on a hell of a race. But so I would wake up about five in the morning and I'd get on Yellow Bullet and I would just start blasting. Them, right, I would just start blasting them every morning. Him, Paul Major, all the whole Yankee, the whole Yankee freaking the million dollar man. Yeah, the million dollar man. I'm gonna blow my roof off my car, all that shit. Right. So every morning. I would get on there and just blast them. Well, we got into this huge fight one day on there. Oh, well, whatever. And he's like, we got this, 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 this. I said, yeah, bitch, we got Stevie fast, bitch. That's all we need. That's and all you need. Up. And that's the way that it actually, it was in the middle of an argument with those guys. And they were telling me, we got this, 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 all these records. I told him we didn't need none of that shit. Got and, Stevie uh, fast. Yeah, I said we got Stevie. Well, I might have threw a couple of MFers in the middle of it. But there was some MFers. That was when the North versus South was hot, and uh, I had to lead ten, lead Team South. Just I ran all the guys back north. Like they they quit coming. Like they came down for about one time, and we we nipped that right on in the bud. I used to man that yellow bullet shit was rough. That was one of my first like introductions into how people don't like a 
pretty girl in drag racing. I learned that on Yellow Bullet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yellow Bullet. I learned a lot on Yellow Bullet. That mm -hmm. was hot. Stevie, did you ever go to that? It was called Drag Radio Message Board just for radio guys way back yeah. in the day. Yeah, I think oh, I got thrown off. Rough. It was just a blue board. And there yeah. was this one, and it was um, – that was kind of the start of it. And then uh, – then uh, yellow bullet, obviously. And I used to be a really nice girl, and I would just come out and support my sister and do all the things. What really turned me into the ravage bitch I am is yellowbullet.com. Whoa. <laughs> that shit would piss me off. People would say all the things, but I like it because I learned how to, honestly, that was the first like forum where I spoke my mind yeah. and kind of got the yeah. reputation of being a bitch. You know what the problem is, is that there's, there's people that want to, you know, in life, you just want to have fun, you know, do it. But yeah. then there was some stuff on there. There's some people on there. They're just, they're just not good people. They're, they're really not. Mad. They're just angry, mm -hmm. miserable, jealous people. And I, yeah, I used to let it bother me, but it taught me how to, how to stand with my mouth and defend the people that I that we defend, you know. But yeah, oh, no, yellow bullet taught me how to be a bitch. What well, could be? I really think bad. you already knew. They did a good job. Well, I already knew. I just didn't know I could do it in the drag racing world. I was trying to be professional, but now I just don't give a shit. Oh, don't yeah. do that. Yeah, you need to. Hey, just think if she could promote your events or something, she'd be hard. Fuck to off, hey, TV. She never would talk about them or anything. She's too, she's too busy over there giving a rub down to the slick tire pro deal or something. <laughs> uh, all right, Doc. Doc, thank you for coming on. Do you have anything you want to say before you go? You got anybody you want to plug? You got anybody you want to cuss out? Anybody you want to talk shit about? Anybody, I, you want to talk about their mama? I'm just right like, after 48 weeks. I think, I what does the world the need to know about Donald Long? Listen, it's radial tire cars to the front, mother effer, and I've been saying that forever. I ain't changing it now. I don't sell out. I ain't one of those, I'm a radial this, radial that. Next thing, you, I'm over there jerking off the slick guys or something. They bring them slick tire cars, they can park that shit down at the end of the racetrack in the weeds. There we go. That's going to be like in 90 years, that'll be on your tombstone. I'm going to make sure if I make it, I, long I long year, I'll carve that deal in there. <laughs> anyway, Courtney, when you get done with this slick tire, people come on out. We, we, ain't for, we, ain't, we ain't forget about you like you did us. I never <laughs> forget about you either, but I do do this cold. <laughs> All right. Y'all long. We really Thanks. appreciate you coming on. Thank you for taking the time. Thank hey, you for tell, always tell telling it X. like it is. Tell Boss yeah. X I, we say hi. I love we her. We will. She's in there. I'll tell her in a minute. No prep sucks monkey balls. Hey, one thing before you go. One <laughs> balls, thing. Balls, that's one another thing. Meter, meter, meter. I need to know one thing before we go. Uh, does Donald Long, is he a fan of fajitas? Do you eat fajitas? Hell yeah. I just had <laughs> some of those. I, I want Lloyd well, Duck is not on your side, Lyle. Listen, if you come down... I will take you to the authentic Mexican restaurant here in Zephyr Hills. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's the best steak or chicken fajitas you ever had. Wow, when they bring it out, how does it, how do they bring it out to the kitchen when they come out? Can you smell it's, it? It's on an iron, a steel iron with a the handle and it. It has the, yeah, it has the onions and the peppers. And you got to mix that stuff around because it will flat out turn black on the bottom. That sucker's so hot, man. Right, Is it yeah. smoking? Yeah. It's smoking. It's, it's, uh, yes. it's a, I it's love a, fajitas. It's a and, steamer. Courtney loves fajitas, and Lyle secretly loves fajitas. Yeah, th those things would look really good in the fucking dumpster out back. Duck. <laughs> Damn. Damn, no prep, guys? <laughs> the fajitas. Oh, sorry. Thank you for coming on, Duck. We appreciate you, brother. We'll talk to you soon. I'll All see right. you in a couple of days. See me fast, Thank $30. You. $50. Bucks. $30. There we go. What a, my, there is, that is the unique, the one and only Donald bro, Long. Um, he came in hot, he stayed like hot, a, and he left hot. Like, there's a lot of people right now feel like they just got hit in the mouth. Me, I do, you and I can't even defend what I want to say because I have a job. <laughs> hey, the Shake and Make show is about saying what you want with little to no thought about it. It and is, not but worry are, about you ready right. to, yeah. are you ready to take over my salary and my insurance needs? <laughs> Yeah, you need to be able to sign some kind of disclaimer with Flo that, like, whatever you say on here shouldn't affect that. Man. Uh, be like, uh, be like, yeah, you know. How um, many times do you find Courtney going like this? Yeah, I could see you biting your whole tongue. Uh, you know, you know. Um, so that was a lot. That was great. Let's all take a breath. A oh. It was awesome, though. That man is so good for this sport. I love his, I, I love his give a fuck level being negative 4,000. 
um, anybody that that has put that work and effort into our sport, um, like Absolutely. Donald has, we all owe him because like him or not like him, he brings relevance to the sport. That's what I was just gonna say. Agree. Eyeballs and puts butts in the stands. And Agree with cool. the things he says or not. The fact that he says what he thinks and does aligns to that. There's not a lot of people like that anywhere. I feel like, and he has stuck to. That's why I asked him what I asked him. He has stuck to. The person he is and the things he believes in from the fucking start, and he does not care. Does not care. And I love that about him. All right. So what do we got left to talk about? We're getting close. What all we got? So we got we covered Vegas. We covered PDRA. We've talked about the all down nationals. We have uh World Street Nationals coming up this week. There's a whole bunch of comments that I kind of missed that I gotta get after. Um Lyle, do you have anything to say? I do. <laughs> you had that I want to say something look on your face. I do. Uh, I'm coming back to NHRA Pro Mod, bitches. Woo-hoo! Let's go. Uh, All right, give so us I, give us the uh, give us the details. I have not signed a dotted line or anything, but verbally, uh, I have committed uh, to drive for Scott Tidwell in NHRA Pro Mod next year. Um, Scott and I kind of started talking about it a, a couple months ago or so, and uh, one thing led to another. And as of now, and it's like I said, it's verbally committed. I'll drive for for Scott Tidwell, one of two entries that he plans to run in an HRA Pro Mod next year. Uh, Steve Petty, Brandon Stroud are going to kind of co-crew chief both cars. Um, and uh, I don't know if Scott's announced who's going to drive the second car, so I'm not going to. It's Give me. me it's me. I'm no, driving it. It's not. You got to wash your hair, drive cars like that. But um, <laughs> uh, I will be back in an HRA Pro Mod next year, and I can't fucking wait. Let's so how go. many races are you planning to run? All of them. Ten races. For the ship. For the ship. Ah, gosh, congratulations, brother. Thanks, and like a lot of you guys think we script this stuff. I was no. just found out about just now. <laughs> like when y'all yeah. did. Kind of like when you That's told great. me Don O'Neill was going to be working for you, and I thought he was working with us. <laughs> a lot of times, what you think is not what what it seems is not actually factual. I not, have. Oh, were you done? No, I just saw some. Co- it will not be a turbo car. Um, I don't know yet. Lord. I don't know yet what form of supercharger uh, we're going to go with. Um, I don't even know that Scott and Petty know yet, but uh, it will be some form of supercharger. That a so, girl, Selena. It's me. So your wiener just got bigger. Much. And I could I could afford that. So it's good. Well, at least it's gonna forgot have wiener. Some... wiener beer. We're at five. All right, so Lionel Barnett in a full time car in twenty twenty four NHRA Pro Mod. What Let's are you go. are you going are you trying to go win a championship? Uh, are you 100%. going to show up? Right. Um I'm coming to win a ship. <laughs> also I will be doing the photos and social media for your car. So um, all them little thirsty scavengers need to just back the fuck up. Ain't happening. That one knows who I'm talking about. Back on up, girl. <laughs> back up. Um, non-racing related? Yeah, what else you got? I have a discussion question while you go through all this. Um, I kind of thought that I've been watching. Oh, my pizza's being delivered. Oh. I ordered a pizza. What kind of pizza did you get? I ordered a thin crust pepperoni mushroom and jalapeno. Poor child. Mm. I love it. My dog's going to start barking. Gosh damn it. Here we go. Um, wh- wh- what is that? So I'm going to hang myself with oh, okay. uh, whatever question you're about to ask me. I have a so discussion don't... question. All right. There goes my dog. Gosh damn it. This was the worst timing ever. While we're here, people... Y'all don't need to hear me yell at my kid. I'm a mean mom. I read something. I was watching a podcast and then I read it. And Dion's really good about this. Hey, knock it off. Sorry. Does he speak English? Yes. Come here, baby. It's okay. Oh, you want to be nice to him after you kick him in the head? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I read somewhere that all foods, and this was a fajita thing, all foods 
can be classified into three different categories and that is it. So I want to do some controversial shit here while we go through the Q&A and maybe get our people involved in this. All foods can be a soup, a salad, or a sandwich. And that is it. So the first question of the day is, what is a fajita? Is it a soup, salad, or sandwich? Jackson, hey. I don't even understand this, but I'm going to say it's a sandwich. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me break it down for you. Okay. A soup has like some kind of base. Like there is no. You think we can get the pizza going? No, he already left. I did contactless yeah. delivery. Um, not because I'm a Democrat. Because we're talking was, about food. I was just curious if we get an outside perspective. All foods <laughs> fall into this category. You don't need any other information. Soup, salad, or sandwich. So, let's just think like spaghetti. What would spaghetti be? Soup, salad, or sandwich? If you have to classify it with no context anywhere else, what would salad. you classify that as? Salad. Why? Salad because it's a lot of shit mixed together. Exactly. So you're feeling you're feeling it here, like chili. Okay. I'm doing easy ones. What would chili be? Soup. 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 Okay. So there's some controversial stuff of this. Like if we're doing breakfast burrito, that's pretty easy. What's that? Sandwich. sandwich. That's going to be a sandwich. Okay. So how you eat your fajitas, Lyle? Soup, salad, or sandwich? Salad. All right, hold on. Now I'm gonna pull up the list of. Oh wait, I'm gonna read this real quick. Soup salad sandwich. What about casseroles? Good call. Good deal there. I do have a dog named Jackson. I'm going through this now. So okay, food. I'm gonna pull up the list. What is pizza? Sandwich. Sandwich. Y'all aren't disagreeing as much as I wanted you to disagree. It's because we have good logic and common sense. And wieners. And wieners. <laughs> Hold on. Which automatically steps right off on the table. Where the fuck is my pen? I threw it at the damn thing. That's a We're at salad. 17 on the PP counter. Um, what about a steak? Soup, salad, or sandwich? Sandwich. Just a sandwich. Why? Because you can hold it like a sandwich and eat it. See, I you think I think I think mind. one piece of protein would just I don't I think that that's just like a well, I guess. Your mind is not functional. It's a sandwich. It's a sandwich. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's why they have because a you, like you can you can have a sandwich with only one with only one thing like, on it. What if you get steak with like mushrooms on top of it? It's still a sandwich. That's a salad because you don't no. have anything to wrap around it. It's just shit on no. a plate. So what if what if you put cheese on a ham and cheese sandwich? It's still a sandwich. That's and still mayonnaise. a sandwich. But why why Mustard. would a steak be a sandwich? You have nothing holding it together like what's your definition of a it's sandwich? like it's like this show and the audience after this topic nothing holding us together whatever listen on tiktok all you people here on tiktok you go look at this this is a very controversial thing well, soup because salad if, you dro if you drop a steak if you drop a, a a bowl of soup on the floor or a salad on the floor you have a mess if you drop a sandwich on the floor it's still just a sandwich but like for an item to be a you, sandwich you doesn't you it pick all it back up eat? and eat it doesn't if you drop all, a steak on the floor, it's still a steak. It doesn't turn into a mess. But doesn't that all need to be like pinned no, together? No, you're wrong. It's a sandwich. Move on. <laughs> no, this is what yeah. I wanted out of this. I feel like in order to be a sandwich, it has to be wrapped around something. Otherwise, it's just a salad and a bunch of shit on the plate. No, not true. Whatever. Y'all suck. Moving on. <laughs> it's backfired on her totally. It's fucking backfired so hard because you go no, look on this. No. There's controversial shit all over it where people let me just, tell you, fans, what Courtney thought was going to happen is that she was going to get me and Lyle fighting each other about the food groups. I did. When I really in did. reality, me and Lyle probably, besides fajitas, we probably like the same food. Exactly. And we have common sense and winners. So we are going to think about things most of the time the same. What, what's another one, Courtney? Hit it's me no with your best shot. Do, do, well, that works away. Like Spanish, but I do, I am, I am, um, Puerto Rican now, so it's fine. You don't, you can't even speak any Puerto Rican. I you went to World Cup finals. That makes me Puerto Rican. Hmm. He froze up. It hit me with one. Um, y'all, y'all have debunked the whole thing and I'm over it. So we'll just play categories next time and be done with it. I'm wow. actually pissed off about it. Truck stop. The truck shop internet is down. Pizza setting on the porch. Yeah, it is. Um, I've seen a couple comments on this, so I'm just going to address it. Um, 
Was there an incident after the wedding in Vegas? Yeah, we we got a lot to cover about that. There's other kind of stuff. So yeah, you want to just give us the the, 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 the version? Of what happened? You don't have to talk about that if you don't want to. But I mean, if you want to, let them know. I've already... been I've been getting a lot of questions about it, so I feel like we should. There was an incident, but I will say that it could have been handled within our own shit, and it was very small until other parties got involved, and mm. we're handling it. And we got seventy five people that travel around with us each time we compete against each other, and. She gets a little tense sometimes, but um, whatever you people heard, I can guarantee you it was not as bad as what you heard. We got her handled. Everybody's alive. Nobody's in jail. Nobody's in the hospital and we're all good. So, yeah, by the time I got the rumor, someone had drugged someone down Las Vegas Boulevard behind a horse by their ankles. No. And <laughs> there was a gang fight at the Spearmint Rhino. And they waterboarded and them in the Bellagio <laughs> Fountain. There yeah, was, there was a, there was a small incident, but it's, it's just like anything else. We go, we travel around the country. We, we are with the same people each and every week. Tensions are high. We compete with each other, but against each other. Some words were kind of spatted and a security guard and a bus driver, they read into a situation more than it should have been. And they kind of got their forces in there and that's when it got bad it really just would have been a couple of guys running their mouth and and whatnot but uh other parties got involved and we had to handle it oh no morgan is there morgan, something we need to morgan. know no is there are we getting are we close no if is anything there a miss, is there a mr anything, purple thief no if anything i'm further away from it than i was four freaking days ago so no absolutely <laughs> not nothing on the radar thank you so much for that though morgan you're my best friend <laughs> She's the she's the one getting booed up. She is getting Morgan. booed up. I didn't take any couple pictures in the booth, but I also saw who got married. Chase Freeman and Jenna Moorhead um, got married, and it was a great freaking time. It was amazing. The wedding was awesome until we went outside. Yeah, and then things then there was a small scuffle. Things went awry. Things but went awry. like, would it be an elite party if we didn't have a small scuffle? No. No, I'd be disappointed. Um, if you smoke by the uh, the scrapper's pit, Lyle, they're going to save you some fajitas. They're having a little lunch Saturday. Oh, man. okay. Let's talk about uh, really quick, and we're we're huh? What you Double O shit show. He called Morgan the porta potty queen. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. There was a rumor that was not true, but that's funny. That's real wow. funny. All right, so we're about to be out of time. Let's smoke through Pomona. So coming up. We got some championship stuff on the line. What do you guys think? Well, and I know for sure in Top Fuel and Funny Car, it's literally just a matter of who goes farther. Right. You know, like in in pro stock, obviously some shit's got to happen. Erica's. I mean, I know it's a, it's I know it's a matter of who can go farther, but Erica's got to. It's got to go really bad for her. It's ours to really, lose. Correct. Uh, pro stock motorcycle. We obviously know what's going to happen there. Gage Rare has got his dong hung all the way out. How has he not yeah. already clinched that? What did they fucking change to make that? Because it's like I figured he did, but they no, didn't they do any yeah. pageantry yeah. in Vegas. There's, it, I mean, it's got to be like a not show up, lose every qualifying point, yeah, whatever. But in top feeling funny car, I know there's at least Leah, Stevo, and Doug. Justin, Doug. Justin Ashley. Justin Ashley's got a chance too. He does. I mean, Doug, yeah. Um, Who are you going with, Lyle? <sighs> Go with your heart, not your head. Heart, not your head. I mean, I want to see Doug Coletta win a championship before he retires. Um, they've ran really well at the back half of the season. I think they deserve it. I would love to see uh, the TSR camp double up. Um, I would love to see Leah and them win one. Neil Strasbog uh, is a, a great crew chief and, and a friend of mine. And I would love to see those guys do well and win a championship. If TSR could double up, I think it would be awesome. Um, if I had to put my money out there right now, mm, Alan Johnson's good out there. I would say that Doug Coletta does well enough and wins it. Okay. I want I want to see Leah win it, um, but I would say that Doug and them wrap it up in what funny car. Again, I want to see Matt Hagen win it. 
Um, I would just, I just want to see TSR double up. I think that would be awesome. But I just think it's hard to stop Jimmy Proc and Robert Height right now. So you're picking Height. Yeah. All right, Pro Stock, you're picking. Double E, let's go. And then Pro Stock, we don't even need to pick that. It's obvious. Yes. Yeah. What about you, Stevie? I'm writing them down. Man, it's tough, and I'm on the fence. So of course, uh, Gage and, and Double E there. Um, my man, Stevo. It, it's hard to pick between them. Emotionally, I've watched Doug Coletta be one of the best race car drivers that I've ever seen for a long time, and my heart wants him to win it because I feel like he deserves it. He does deserve um, it. My, the guys from Texas, uh, Steve-O, it's hard to root against them. Like, I would – if Doug Coletta's not there, I'm pulling for them here uh, just because of the season that they've had, the struggle that they've had. Like, I love, I like that, and I understand that. So, it's really difficult for me to pick between them two. Um, I think the way he's driving and with Alan Johnson, I will pick uh, Doug. Yeah. And then, funny car, man, I have no idea. Y'all can just flip a coin. I agree. It's you hard can. to bet against height. Um, it is, man. But, it's so good. But everybody's running so damn good. It's going to be whoever can handle their emotions that day. Yeah. I gotta say I feel the same way. My my drag racing fiasco heart says Coletta all day long. Um, but them Capco boys, man, they are pissed off. They are hungry. You cannot count them out. And then you got Leah winning races on whole shots and taking points leads. Like I don't I don't even know how to pick, but just as the drag racing fan, I gotta go Coletta and uh, that's gonna upset my Texas boys, but I gotta go Coletta. Um, funny car. My gut tells me that Tasca is gonna do something, but my head tells me your gut is stupid. Um, and I'm going with Hagen. I like that. It's not a bad bet. Not a bad bet. I like that choice. I'm going with Hagen, and I'm going with Hagen and Erica as a JHG double up. Ooh wee. Uh, we did not. I saw a comment. We did not mention Angie Smith taking a oh, yeah. cruise down the. I guess she was in the left lane. Doesn't matter. Down the strip at Las Vegas um, to get some qualifying points and whatnot after her horrendous crash. So, Bro. kudos to her for getting on that thing. Mentally, that was the best thing that could happen. But and I told her this to her face. Angie's one of my best friends. This is not me talking shit. Love that she did it. I stood right behind her. I would have been nowhere else but right behind her. But I cannot believe the NHRA let her do that. I, I cannot freaking believe it. They pulled my competition license for almost a year. That's what I'm saying. Like I again, I love it. This isn't. I stood behind her to show what I what I feel. But I feel like if Linda Louie was still there, this shit wouldn't have fucking flown. No way. No way. Uh, I see some comments about beer money. I think I'm gonna run this weekend. I'm just not sure where yet. So. I'll post on my social at some point. Oh, yeah. All right. Fernando. So we got, man, we're late. All right. World Street Nationals this weekend. Pro Mod paying 30000 RVW, Pro 275. Points battles up for a lot of the races. Uh, I don't know who all's coming for Pro Mod. Uh, but this time of year in Florida, it's good racing. Looks to be a little warm. It's going to be a good show. I'm heading down there with two customers, um, Timmy Meissner and Chad Henderson. We will be get the winner's circle with both of those who do y'all like in pro mod well i would think there would be a bunch going to get ready for bradenton but i have no idea who's going either me neither i have no no clue. not at all there will be no live feed so you guys will have to stay tuned to some facebooking and stuff i will figure out mm -hmm. how to watch that but there will be no live feed. jay warren going with the nc pro modder do we know uh, we can hope. <laughs> we hope he's there. And then the snowbirds coming up. Huge race. Tech cards sold out in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, doing a great job promoting, paying a lot of money. That's going to be a show uh, to watch. Is Flo streaming that? Yes. Okay, Flo, will you be at the World Series of Pro Mod? Absolutely. Yep, I'll be. I'm doing the Pro Race. I'm doing World Series of Pro Mod. I'm doing U.S. Street. I'm doing all the things. Um uh yeah snowbird's gonna be really cool i don't know if i'm gonna be at snowbirds victor don't call and scream at me we'll figure it out but um yeah um why, so why we got a lot of comments going? about yeah why are y'all not showing the race 
Which race? The World Street Nationals. Everybody's asking. Because it's not a contract we have. <laughs> okay. So it's not a flow thing. It's just something that the promoter um, doesn't. Yeah. And, and like in the dirt world and stuff, a lot of contracts are anything that happens at a specific track they do. Drag racing is very different. It is all race and promoter related. So. Well, look forward to uh, Ozzy and Maria putting on a good show. Look forward to seeing the fans. Florida, most of the country is frozen. I'm at a truck stop in South Georgia, and I'm about to, when we get all up here, head further south. Hey, one more quick little shout out. World Series of Pro Mod, speaking of, World Series of Pro Mod champion Spencer Hyde racing top fuel top this fuel. weekend I'm in Pomona right. for yep. Elite Motorsports. Let's fucking yep. go. That's pretty awesome. Mm, yes. That's pretty exciting. Lots of wheels turning. Yep. I think that when 2024 gets here, we'll be shocked at the names that we have seen race in other organizations that are racing. Yep. Uh, I think Alive there's well, be more friend. than what you think. Live and well. So I'm excited. This was about great. It. I missed y'all. I, I missed you guys y too. I missed you. Guys. <laughs> Not uh, anybody, fuck off, Lyle. Um, thank you guys for being patient. Uh, when some we try to hit every other week, when something comes up, we have to miss. It's normally pretty serious in life. There's racing. There's something. I'm gone. There's uh, so thank you guys for your patience. Uh, we averaged 1,500 viewers tonight, and uh, we really appreciate you guys and everything you do for our sport. Without you fans, none of us have a job, and I mean that. And yeah, we appreciate you guys. My pizza is getting cold. Yeah, I wish I had some pizza. I'm fixing to eat some cheese balls. Get me a monster. And balls, down that finishes it out. Balls, balls, balls. That was 20. 20 balls. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Love Thank you, guys. We'll see you in two weeks. Appreciate you guys.